All right, everyone. Welcome back to the Crazy Crafter live stream. Uh, so yeah. so glad to uh, to to have everyone uh, everyone back on this uh, first stream of the new year. We are here and we are excited to be with you. Um, today we have a very special guest. Our featured guest today is Damien Damien Beauchamp uh, Beauchamp from uh, the the cra the Cave of Crafting. Damien, welcome to the stream. Thank you. It's great um, to be here. Yay! Uh, as always, joined by um, uh, Michael Patterson from Nat One Videos. Hello, mate. How you doing? I'm doing awesome. Glad to be <laughs> he's, here. I was Looking like, forward to he's gonna give us, one. He's gonna give us the silent treatment. I was like, he's just gonna he's just gonna go silent. <laughs> um, hey, me? Yeah, I thought I thought you were you, when I when I first I was like, how are you doing? And you were like. Hello. <laughs> it was the quiet wave. <laughs> it was the quiet, calm wave. It's all that delicious wine you have ready to prep, be, uh, to be, to be drank over there. That's what it is. That is the benefit of being this side of the water at this time of day. Truth. <laughs> Truth. Oh my goodness. Um, okay. Um, and then also, uh, joined as always, uh, Dan Danny West is, is here joining with us. Say hello, omnipotent voice. Hello, omnipotent voice. <laughs> uh, good, good, uh, good to hear you um, uh, today, Danny. Thanks for for joining us. Danny's monitoring the chat today, um, so if you have any questions for for Damien as we get into the craft today, and we're working, throw it up in there. Danny will be uh, more than happy to, to relay that, relay that to all of us. Um, hello to you uh, all out there. Hope you're doing well uh, in this. In as we as we are th now working on three days, or some of you are closer to four days into the new year. Um, hope you all had a, a lovely, safe, and happy, uh, healthy new year. Thanks for joining us today, and let's get crafting. What are we What are we building today, uh, Damien? What are we going to work on? Yeah, so I am going to show. I'll show you a piece I finished. Um, this is a piece that I did already, and I using this tree bark here for rock effects so nice. stone and rock and uh, and i'm not going to just do any water effects today but we're going to talk about some terrain using tree bark as stone okay nice i just have a base piece here uh yeah and, and the thing is so here's a just a piece of bark unpainted and i you know, you know when you, once you get this all painted and dry brushed and with your wash it's unbelievable how even these little lines become tr you know striation and scale and you know one wouldn't think that tree bark would look so much like stone i mean i definitely carved a lot of stone out of foam for for some time and it just doesn't even look as good as as the tree bark does and that's my go-to yeah, now for any rock it's hard to beat the natural elements. Um, yeah. It's so I, – I, we were talking about this before the stream started, y'all, um, how when I found and connected with Damien um, and his his channel, which, by the way, Damien is – is there a social media platform you are not on, my friend? You are all over the place. <laughs> it's awesome. Damien, Damien, uh, Damien's uh, got some fantastic – not on content. Twitter. I'm not on Twitter. You're not on Twitter. That's okay. Fair enough. So one. There's one that you're not on. Damien, uh -huh. Damien has um, – he's got some great uh, content out there. He's got, he's, he's got a, a YouTube channel, The Cave of Crafting. He's on Instagram. And then um, one of the more fascinating ones that I have been really enjoying going into is your TikTok. And the TikTok uh, was something that helped me – as I started getting into um, Michael's build, the Dwarven Cemetery that I've been working on on the Crafting with Colin sessions during the weekday live streams that I've been doing. And it's the first time that I've worked painting up bark. And I was just like, mm. I, I painted a lot of stuff and I wanted to use some similar stuff, but your TikTok video, uh, it's like a three-parter on different, yeah. uh, on, on the stone texture for the bark, really um, helped helped me bring, bring that, uh, portion of the the piece of life so it was really it's it really cool which is one of the reasons i was like dude we have to i was like this is a great a great build to to come on and talk about if you've ne a, if you've never worked with it before how to work with it and properly say and safely prep it for for the tabletop as well as you know uh its versatility as a replacement for stonework and different texture for for the tabletop terrain because it's awesome yeah i agree yeah, so I, yes, I am lots of places, but I would say my most intense attention goes to my TikTok. Dude. Um, I do have YouTube videos. I was just saying I need to continue 
making YouTube videos, those are just a lot more labor intensive. And I do, I am a full time teacher, so it's hard yeah. to get that much footage edited. But I can kind of knock those TikToks out. And it's really just my focus has been just quick tutorials. Here's how to quickly make a window. Here's how to quickly make a door. I'll show you how. Again, sometimes it has to be a series. So the stonework, I have to sometimes make a three or four part series because I just can't get it in 60 seconds. Yeah, but, you, you were talking um, about, that. like, that's an, another thing we were talking about um, when we connected was 60 seconds, right? It's 60 seconds for TikTok? Dude, yeah. that is... 59, really. But 59 yeah. seconds. That's a yeah. that's not a lot of time. For those of you that have ever, yeah. you know... I think I think um, you know I, I can appreciate that as a as a as a fellow teacher as well uh, having you know having a time clock and teaching to it but yeah. sixty second lesson whoo that is that's yeah. that's a lot of information to convey in a short period of time yeah it's it seems a lot longer than sixty seconds in a good way in a good way you know way. what I mean you yeah. you actually yeah. manage sure, to sure. I've been watching the TikTok and you manage to squeeze yeah. in a lot more information than you think yeah. you can get in sixty seconds. You know, and the editing process, so usually I have seven minutes worth of video. Mm -hmm. And so I trim out all the spaces and all the ums and all this. I repeat myself a lot. I trim all that. I'm in Premiere Pro. I trim all that out. And I get it down to like, I'm like, okay, I'm feeling good. I think I got it down. And it's like a minute 24. Crap. So then I have to find 24 seconds worth of fat to trim out. And you really, it's just, it's bare bones. I have to just get it down to only the important information. There's no space for anything really. Um, but it's cool. I think it's like a, a, the, uh, one of my favorite uh, sayings is necessity is the mother of invention. Mm -hmm. So being forced to constrain it down to that has really taught me how to be a more effective teacher in, in this regard anyway. Nice. Nice. I don't know. It's I like it. I'm really enjoying it. And the community is amazing. The TikTok people, at least at least in the crafting community, unbelievably supportive, very kind. Some of the coolest, kindest, uh, most diverse people I've ever had any interactions with. So and I'm enjoying it. And to that regard, uh, that, that sounds like a good place to segue in because I don't think we've seen Tortoise Mom 50 before in in the stream, but. <laughs> Tortoise Mom 50 uh, is, is saying hello to you, Damien. <laughs> hello, Tortoise Mom. <laughs> yeah, she's one, she's one of our favorites. Yeah, she's cool. Where? Yeah. Where, oh, well, a good. Well, thank you for joining us, Tortoise Mom. Thank you. I, I see. Um, I see. Um, uh, Tortoise Mom is Tortoise Mom. I don't see Tortoise Mom in the chat. I see. I see Sarah bunch, W. Sarah W. Welcome, Sarah W. Welcome, Tortoise Mom. Welcome. Uh, we've got some other faces out there. Cloud Twirl. You've been. Uh, you've been. Cloud Twirl. Uh, Cloud Twirl. Cloud Twirl. I, th I believe was connected connected uh, to uh, to the channel recently via 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 you, Damien. So yeah. so happy that uh, that uh, a fellow <laughs> fellow fellow um, uh, cave crafters are, are are hanging out with us today. Thanks for joining us, y'all. Yeah. It's great great Thanks to have you all. Guys, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys know you. They know all too well of um, how amazing your your um, your tutorials on TikTok are. Um, you know, if you haven't if you haven't seen any of Damien's stuff, um, d be sure to check it out. In addition to TikTok, you do have an Etsy store as well, and yeah. you've uh, you've got some stuff up there for sale as well. And if you guys mm -hmm. have a chance, you should definitely check it out. It's uh, there's there's it's it's a, it's a great store, and there's some really really cool builds. One of them is that. Is this modular piece you're showing? Isn't is is that not is that correct? Uh, that piece I just showed you. I have. I'm gonna add some mushrooms to it. I like. I'm into the mushrooms. Mushrooms. So I, <laughs> yeah. I you're a hobbit. You're a hobbit. That, that, <laughs> that will be up. I do have some rock up there now. I have a big set piece that has the tower and a little altar tomb thing that goes together. Um, but that piece will be up there probably in the next day or two. I just have to finish up with the mushrooms. Um, yeah. And I'm working on this guy too. Hold on a second. I've got to, I'm trying. I'm kind of working on. Uh, I'm building sort of a big monster here out of bark as well. I've got the legs and the torso and sort of maybe an upper area, but we'll see how that goes. I'm trying. I'm still working on how to get some limbs rock. on it. That'll be <laughs> a, ro a rock, like a yeah. rock golem. Like a, yeah, like a rock golem. Yeah, yeah. A bark. Super just playing cool. with it. And see what I can get. So um, yeah. uh, just uh, I wanted to um, ask about, so you're a teacher, Damien. Yeah. And um, having the skill of teaching 
while making these TikTok videos, you know how to trim down the fat. That's the, oh, yeah. the that's why things are going well. I think is that you yeah. know how to teach something. Sure, sure. Anyway, Purposeful but, is the word. Purposeful is the word. So as a teacher, really, you know, I have to. I have to find way, creative ways of making sure that everything I'm doing is purposeful. You know, um, that doesn't mean that it always has to be intense and on point because there are definitely times when we go off script, you know, in class and we have to talk something out or we're, my kids are really interested in something, want to explore something that's off the topic. So I, you know, I make space for that, but yeah, I, uh, I would say that the two worlds have definitely benefited, mutually benefited one another, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm putting this here in the chat too, but if, um, uh, as, as so many folks are starting to, to pile in, um, and, uh, definitely w welcome, welcome to the, to the stream. If you're just joining us, we've got Damien, uh, Beauchamp from, uh, the cave of crafting with us. If you're new, the to cave, the, uh, the cave, the cave of crafting. If you are new to, uh, the stream, be sure to type new in the chat introduce yourself let us know where you're from and it, what you're crafting on what are you working on today are you building this with us uh, this stream isn't just dedicated you don't you don't have to build what we're building uh, on on the tutorials for the day but uh, if you're not building this what are you working on uh, what 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 builds are you working on what what uh, do you have any questions on the build you're working on you've got some good minds here in uh, in the stream today to, to pick the brain so if any questions come up be sure be sure to, to bring them up um, uh, let's see. I, I, I think we should kind of dive right in here, uh, Damien. Let's see see how far we can get with this thing today. Uh, what's yeah. what's our first step? What are we going to do with this XPS piece of XPS foam? Um, okay, so you know this is just a six inch by seven inch piece. I'm not sure what that is in centimeters immediately, but um, it doesn't matter. Just any kind of base piece, even if you just had a piece of scrap, however big or small. I just thought this would be a good manageable piece to work with, and of course. Lots of bark that I've gathered. You guys have you have the table view here? Yeah, it looks okay. good. We can so see it. Different, different pieces of bark that I'm working with, um, and that's kind of where we're going to start. I will begin with, I'm going to black this out, and you can either use the base coat. I use the classic Mod Podge and black paint mix, but you don't necessarily need to. This doesn't necessarily need to be sealed. But I do want to make it black first because if there are any gaps or holes between the bark and you can kind of happen to see in, I don't want shiny blue green foam right. looking back at me. Sure. So I'm just going to hit it with some, I'm just going to hit it with some craft smart black paint. It doesn't oh. have to be a super thick coat. Cool. Just going to lay some directly on and spread it around and get that, get that going. It dries pretty quick. A tool I didn't talk about, I have talked about, I need to get it up on my, so that's another thing. So if you go to my, if you watch my TikToks, I have had a lot of people asking about equipment that I use. Mm -hmm. And so I created a, I created a website that has links to a lot of the equipment I use on Amazon. I try to find the cheapest, let me just say that I, my philosophy, part of my philosophy is do it as cheaply and easily as possible while that's maintaining, you know, while maintaining good aesthetic. Right. I don't want to look like trash, but I, I use the cheapest paints. I use the cheapest paint brushes. These brushes I'm using here, I'm almost exclusively craft smart stuff because I live so close to a Michaels. This yeah. is the set of brushes. This is a ten dollars set. Um, I have that. I bought two sets, and I've been using this set that I'm using now for a year. So oh, I nice. may never open that second package. It doesn't matter because the the brushes get beat up, and I just keep washing them and yeah. using them. But you anyway, keep going. As yeah, I live really close to a Michaels, so Michaels is kind of my go-to. I live close to uh, but a I was Joanne's. Saying, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do, we we do that as well. They just not quite the selection of Joanne's. Yeah, Michaels is better. And I like we the Craft Smart brand. The, yep. Yeah, I like the Craft Smart brand. It is super cheap, but it is qual is good. It's good quality for the price you pay. Mm -hmm. uh, which I think is Michaels brand. I think Craft Smart is Michaels brand. I think um, so too. Yeah. So I uh, what was I saying? So I I. I yeah, again, if you go to my TikToks, I have make reference to that website. It is, uh, I don't know the website, um, the URL off, off the top of my head, but um, you have links to that stuff there and also to my Etsy store. The link is there also at my at my um, 
in my bio and my TikTok. We've also we've so also I, got all the links up to your Etsy store, Instagram, perfect, TikTok, perfect. and your YouTube channel up in the description for this video. So if you're not familiar with any of Michael or uh, any of Damien's Damien's uh, uh, places where you can get in contact and check out all of this stuff, uh, it's it's listed in the description for the stream. So you perfect. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And my email is the cave of crafting at Gmail too. But nice. what I was going to say is, uh, Instagram is actually the newest thing. One of lots of people get on my videos and comment, "Hey, you should have an Instagram where you're posting pictures." And I'm like, "Oh, okay." So there's not a ton of stuff on my Instagram. I don't usually use a lot of hashtags. I'm just putting pictures up there. Mm -hmm. um, a tool I haven't talked about really is I have one of these just craft um, grade hot air guns. Um, I oh, use this is thing that, constantly. Is, it, is that to dry to dry out your paint? Dry paints, dude. Uh, melt, melt things. Um, you know, it does lots of stuff. So this might be a little noisy. I don't know if that's too loud or not. But no, that's good. Just, it's gonna get. It, all okay. of us are gonna be painting here, or are gonna be. <laughs> we're gonna be hair drying, air drying all this stuff to keep keep moving along here. You can um, use a hair dryer too. A hair dryer will work. I just happen to have this. So that's what I'm doing. I use it to, I'll use yep, a hair dryer. I use it to quickly dry paint. And this base, I mean, this black paint. It'll dry for you in a couple of minutes all by itself, but if I get a little ahead of you guys, that's actually probably a good thing. That's not a bad I thing. Can, I can I guarantee can you you're going to get ahead of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, this is already almost dry. I got a couple spots that got a little thick. I just kind of maybe touch it. And it doesn't have to be super thick. I just wanted a black surface to start off with. Sure. Additionally, this is a matte paint, so it makes it a little rough, and glue will stick to it more easily. Oh, nice. Also, nice. yeah. And it isn't so even necessary. I got, in the chat. I, got okay. a, I got a couple things in the chat. Um, yeah. JT has joined us, and that's fantastic. And then Saunder has a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. um, he's wondering, Damien, what you teach. Um, and, but then additionally, uh, he says that he checked out your Etsy store. Um, and it, though it's not directly related to the current live build, he's wondering how uh, he determined what tiles went into his dungeon tile set mm. research mm. yeah so what tiles did i choose for the set that i posted i believe that's what he's he's asking yes yeah i have a dungeon tile set there it's, i've got one sitting here actually this is a basic set that i wanted to put together that i could very reasonably price um i have one five by five three four by fours and six three by threes and that's the that's a that's just the basic set that i put together for dungeon tiles um i'm also going to have i have a plans for a dungeon tile video coming up uh just to show people how to make their own because that is the i mean if you want to talk about the very first project anybody should do yeah. it's dungeon tiles it's dungeon it is tiles. the most basic yeah. they're so simple you use them constantly and i chose i just chose like a standard gray black stone painting scheme for those um no big deal nothing fancy so this is a stone i also do a wood um i'm considering doing a, a reversible so stone on one side wood on the other i know i've seen that out there some people like that so you can have a dungeon tile and you can have like tavern tiles or you know whatever wooden tiles um but yeah this is a pretty basic there's nothing fancy about this dungeon tile design or paint scheme and as I said, if you go to, if you're following me on TikTok, I do have an upcoming, I'm planning an upcoming series to just show basic dungeon tiles because I think it's a great place for people to start and really practice. You can practice painting, and if you totally mess it up or you don't like it, no big deal. No it's just big a dungeon deal. tile. Yep. You know, it's not a whole build that you just messed up because you poured your black wash all over it or something. Right. Um, and then, yeah. Uh, and I choose sixth grade. Yeah, re regarding Sorry? the sizes, I think that we've seen a lot of people lock into the three by three. Um, yeah. Is there a particular reason why uh, the four by four and the five by five, just just so for diversity or larger rooms, or what's the yeah. logic there? Sure, absolutely. So you know, I think people, what I what I've seen is I think people feel like they have to make a big twenty by twenty dungeon tile. Mm. You know, they feel like they have to have that big room or that hall or something, and like that's fine, but if I have if I say if I had a couple of these sets, if I had two five by fives and then throw a couple of four by fours up against them, whatever, I can recreate that room. But then this becomes other things. So I have a smaller room in a hallway leading up to it or whatever, you know. Uh, I just think personally, I'd rather arrange, have the versatility of rearranging smaller tiles and have one big one 
laying around that I might use a couple of times, mm. you know, really. I just think it's, for me, it's versatility. I think the set, I think this little set right here gets you a long way. And you can have a hallway and a room and you're done with that space, then rearrange them into your next space or buy a couple sets, whatever. We, but, we've, fantastic. We, Thunder, let us know if that answered your question. Yeah. And I, te- and I teach sixth grade. Sorry, I teach sixth grade. They're like, you know, 12 year olds mostly. <laughs> Dude. And they're, and they're amazing. Have you ever incorporated crafting into your classroom yet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm a geek first. I'm a teacher second. So, <laughs> nice. yeah, no, we do lots of uh, nothing this intense because there's a lot of equipment my kids just can't use. Sure. Uh, in school. Like if they just just have a safety situation, I can't have them using right. you know, razor, razor knives or whatever. Um, but I we do use lots of material we have cardboard boxes and paper and paints and whatnot and we build i have a whole unit i do um where we build it we build a town basically so we build a town it starts off with we have a big space on the floor and i have them make trees and animals and we populate that space with nature and then we have to develop a town so they have to cut down trees they have to deforest they have to um you know displace wildlife that's there and we calculate all of like how many trees have been cut down how much wildlife's been displaced mm. what's the most efficient way to build our town to have the lowest impact on the natural environment it's a big long unit takes a couple weeks and yeah we're building and crafting and doing all kinds of cool stuff the whole time nice that's super bad all right i'm ready to start gluing down some bark what do you guys think i am too i i, I i'm i'm i added i had a couple spare pieces of foam so i'm trying i'm i'm gonna work with a couple different levels on mine here oh, same good. same yeah. piece but just oh yeah bit. I wanted to add another level to to mine. That's that's a great point, Colin. And I'll show you because, like, so you know, I got this this scrap piece here. If I stick yeah. this in the corner, yeah, you know, I could stick I could stick that in a corner. I could even have, yep. you know, an even smaller piece like so, right? And instead of building up with bark, I just build up my base. So all really, all I'm doing is laying on a veneer right. of texture. Right. And that is the that is the that is the name of this game. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I've got this build going on right now. I'll show you. So this is a this is a another build that I'm working on, oh, and you know there's all this empty space inside. Nobody will ever see this again once I get my roof and my walls on it. Right. So really everything is on the surface, and yeah, I've definitely have done things where I build up, build up the terrain first with foam, and then lay on the yeah, bark. That's I, I saw one of uh, one of your other builds or one of the photos that you shared with me had that that or it may, mm-hmm. it may have been the stone uh, one on TikTok. It had the other one. I was yeah. Like, oh, I want to do that on Sunday. I'm gonna. Add another yeah. level. It was inspired. I took the inspiration from from your your instruction. So I was like, I'm gonna do it. I want to. That's awesome. That. Yeah, yeah. Can I, I didn't do a two tiered thing. Sorry. Um, are you gluing with hot glue here? Yep, hot glue. I have my sure binder hot glue gun. It is hot glue, not low temp hot glue. Mm. Don't use the low temp stuff. A question I get all the time is, does that melt the foam? No. If I stick the tip of the hot glue right onto the foam, it will melt it, of course. But I have not had run into a problem where my hot glue is melting my foam. It's just never been a thing. But yes, hot glue. I like hot glue. It's quick. It's easy. Um, it's immediate. Right. I stick it on. It's done. So just get in here. Lay on I've, some. I'd never baked the bark before because I've never. Oh the, yeah. This is the first time, and like, mm-hmm. it was a very strong Sorry. smell in the kitchen. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love the smell. Yeah. I like it myself. Yeah. It's I aromatic. Too. Yeah. I do too. I don't know if for my wife is as know. happy with it, but, but um... <laughs> my wife's cool. Uh, <laughs> for those who don't know, um, yes, if you're bringing in bark from outside, anything you're really pretty much anything you're bringing in from outside, leaves you're probably fine with. But if you're bringing in bro- bark and rocks and things, you'll want to put those in your oven at 250 degrees for at least two hours, yeah. and that will kill bacteria. That will dry it also because this bark was actually kind of damp when I brought it mm-hmm. in, and that will mm-hmm. dry it out nice and nice and dry for you and it kills anything living especially bacteria you don't want to bring a bunch of bacteria into your crafting studio nope so let's just keep at it and the, with the bark pieces so um you know i i look at the pieces i have i picked i selected some chunks today that i thought would be interesting uh and then you know I, i'm sort of like the chaos i don't want to overthink it too much so i just start fitting it in where it looks like it will fit in I started arranging it you know again for this piece I knew this piece I knew I wanted to create a water feature so I made sure to maintain this sort of cavity in the middle 
Um, but that's not necessarily what I'm doing today. So this could be just a rocky terrain. Right. I may leave a, I think I may, I think I may leave a path through the middle. So this could represent, you know, this could just be a trailer. You know, it could be a, a gorge on either side. I think that's what I'll go with today. I've not really done that before. So I'll experiment a little nice. bit. Nice. Um, yeah. And you know, you see this here, like if I, I could, it doesn't look like it fits neatly. It doesn't necessarily have to puzzle together, but then I can go in later and break off little chunks when these are all stuck and just start sticking them in and filling in, you know, almost like mortar, start filling in gaps with smaller pieces. Even sure. really thin pieces can be used to cover up space. Now, you know, again, we're just creating a veneer here. Do you layer bark on top of bark sometimes too? Like, do you, do you stack it up as well, Damien, when you put it on the piece or do you just do a single layer to cover the, the enough to cover the foam? It depends. So I do, I will maybe take a, piece of bark and sort of prop it up like this to create a slope um or if i had a piece of oh yeah 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 foam there i do i, I necessarily stick a piece of bark right on top of another bark unless i wanted a really tall i may want to do that maybe i will do that actually that's a good idea let's just let's just play i'll stick this right to the top of that so i get a really nice tall piece of rock right here mm. refresh the glue stick i found some i normally really have around my you can get the long glue sticks and i oh yeah yeah i i found a couple of I found this really thin bark um, that I was, again, just going with what I'd had around <laughs> the neighborhood. Um, so I'm working a lot with that. I've got some couple couple thicker pieces up here too. But I like this thinner bark because it's, it's, it's almost just like – it's almost as flat like you're layering a piece of XPS foam like you're talking about. Like adding that sloped effect you're talking sure. about, you can yep. – you know, being flatter, it works, it works pretty good. Yeah, totally. The flat bark is great for building up, like you said. And I made like I've used it for like to make little, like, little stir. Yep. For case you know, build that up way as well. I'm intent toward the end, but in the beginning here, I'm just slapping chunks together. Yep. Um, something else about the hot glue gun, people complain often about those strings you get from hot glue. I've got a string yeah, right there. That? I don't know if you can see that or not. But this heat gun yeah. again, if I just I zap it with the heat gun, string is gone. It just melts them right yeah. away. They disappear. Yeah. So I know people, I've had lots of times people have asked about the irritation of hot glue strings. And the heat gun will melt those away instantly. They just disappear. Nice. Nice. All right. Let's see. I only literally, I've only learned like that this recently. Yeah. It's nice. Get rid of those hot glue strings. They can be irritating, especially if you're doing like shingles or something where you have lots of hot glue going down on small things and it starts to really get quite irritating, but I just ignore it. And every once in a while I hit it with the hot, hot air gun and it takes care of it. <clears throat> I believe Sonder is jokingly concerned that, uh, Damien, you are just too quick. Uh, oh, yeah. you're just going to fall um, the dust. I'm coming along. I'm coming along. I'm doing, I'm trying to keep fine. up. I'll tell oh, you, Michael's showing up. They're showing up. They're doing it. <laughs> you, I'll t I'll t so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Sorry, I'm off. I'm off camera. I get. I get a couple of new old. You're all right. Here. Do your thing. Um, but you know, when you're, I suppose the first time you're doing something like this, you're really like uh, trying to think through how to arrange it. I've got a basic idea. It literally just popped in my head that I want to make this into like a gorge. So I know I want two walls on either side with a path going through the middle of some kind. I'll probably flop that with sand or whatever at the end. Um, but I'm not thinking about it. I'm just taking a piece of bark and I kind of look at where it kind of fits. I actually want to break this one in half and it's a little tough. So I've got some needle nose pliers here. I just do this. Uh, it's a messy job because I liked I kind of liked how this fit in here. How did I have that going? Was that the piece? I think I liked how this was looking over here. Maybe that was not going to work like I thought it was. See, that's the thing. I don't know. Oh, well, hey, that's actually kind of nice. Oh, well, that works right there like that. So I just I just move things around. I find a spot where I like it, and I say, oh, you know what? I like it. And I stick it on. But I do move kind of quick. This is not my first rodeo <laughs> doing this. And, you know, don't don't overthink, you know, sort of let that that sort of stream of consciousness thing happen. Just start just sticking bark on it. Just yeah. and, and the first the beginning is always quick, you know, because you're just getting the body on. I'm not into the details yet. That's where right. things are going to slow down slow quite down a bit. And I start to think about yeah. how I really want to shape those things. Mm -hmm. I kind of want my I kind of think about what my path to curve in like this. 
and then maybe back out like that. So I'm just in my mind, I'm sort of placing that path there, giving it a nice bend to create some dynamic, you know, visually dynamic texture or um, look to it. So that's I'm kind of my, my, my method now is then I am creating the edge of what I think will be that the bottom of that ravine. So I've got mm -hmm. this curving in like so, then I want it to go out here. So I'm going to focus on kind of getting those walls in first. At least that's my thinking right now. I think I'll take those. A hot glue gun is not playing ball. Uh oh. Uh oh. And if that, did you turn it off by accident? I know I've done that. I click, flip the switch and I'm like, all of a sudden it's not coming out. Like, what's going on? And oh, it's been, it's been offered. Minutes. I think it's just overused. It's just mm. kind of starting to wear out. The, tr the trigger on it's really bad. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, Michael right. and Colin, uh, yeah. Cloud Twirl is throwing out pro tips right now. If you're ever getting too far behind, <laughs> uh, the best advice is to bring up Lord of the Rings. Um, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> That's but that's gonna stall. <laughs> that's gonna stall Damien and not really. It's gonna stall yeah. Michael too because then it's just gonna become a Lord of the Rings stream. <laughs> oh know, goodness, Colin, this is your Trump card. This is your Trump card, Colin. Keep it in your back pocket. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> slow, uh, slow. You may have met the biggest. <laughs> I literally just watched the the whole of the the trilogy over the last four Me days too. again in mm -hmm. 4K. Yep. Have you seen the 4K version yet? I don't think I've seen 4K version. It's just being released, and honestly, it's like watching a new movie. Just mm. letting you know. Just letting you know. Wow. <laughs> just putting it out there. It's amazing. <laughs> oh man, I'm obsessed. Anyway, there's now we're we're wrapping that. up Return of the King today. Oh nice. We watch it every we watch it every holiday, every every year during the holiday break we watch Lord of the Rings. Nice. I watch it every week, and that is not even a joke. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. It's it's an amazing series. It's an amazing series. What's um? I'm curious for everyone. Uh, by out the there. way, guys. Oh, go ahead. Just so you know, it is actually J.R. Tolkien's birthday today. Did you know that? Oh, happy, no way! Happy it birthday! It is actually his birthday that. today. There we go. I did not know that. That's amazing. That's cool. Uh, you what might be that? interested. There's the TikTok I follow. It is um obscure or unknown or something lord of the rings facts and all he does is or tolkien lord of yeah, the rings cool. you go I'm to like who i follow i follow him and it's just you know, all he does is make videos of just of trivia stuff that lots of pe people mostly don't know about Hashtag lord of the rings tolkien or about tolkien talk. yeah something like that I forget what it's called mm. he does lives all the time too okay cool all right like I'm now going to take Damien's advice and blast off my wisps. Blast them oh, yeah. off. The wisp blast. Wispy blast. Mm. Also, a little trick, if you glue something down, um, you know, if I if I when you pull away you get that, that string, you kind of give it a little twirl too. It sort of wraps the string around the tip, and then you don't just drag the string across your table. Right, right, which is not a bad idea. Not a bad idea at all. Because the, I'll have tools laying here, and they'll be all across the handles, and I pick it up, and then all of a sudden I pull four pieces of bark off the table. <laughs> You're like, you know, it's, whoops. it's like that. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's a, that's a tough piece right there. Hey. I actually, I also have this handy dandy little hand saw that I use. Sometimes oh, nice. if I have a bigger piece that I need to need saw. to saw. So cool. Yeah. That's a good idea. Cut. Oh yeah. Is she working with this material? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, that's gonna be getting pretty gosh darn close. Look at that. So, Damien, um, yes. I mean, I'm not 
myself just going for uh, kind of a playable kind of terrain the way you're doing. I'm just kind of putting something together. Yeah. Is the next okay. the next step is just to black mod podge out everything? I I presume. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Next step will be to black mod podge everything. Get that base coat on all the surfaces. Oh. Thank now, you. Damien, yeah. do you lay your any any uh, dirt or stone? Like, uh, do you are you are you doing the base the uh, the mod podge before you throw any of that dirt down? You just it's just the bark right now. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I will mod podge and I do that all. Uh, dirt, anything like flocking will happen after I've done all of my painting. Copy that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Usually, even even if I'm going to paint the dirt, I will do that after I've already done all my rock work. What's up, hot glue on my finger? That feels oh yeah, great. It'll get you. It'll, It'll wake get you. Up. you. I've, I've gotten blisters. <sighs> I was working with something, putting hot glue down in the top, it, and without realizing it was squeezing out of the bottom and just went right across my hand. Fresh mm -hmm. hot glue right directly on my hand. That was delightful. It's kind of inevitable. It's not when. It's not if you're going to burn yourself with the hot glue. It's when you're going to burn <laughs> yourself with the hot it. glue. That's true. Yeah, it is. It is going to happen. You are going to cut yourself. You are going to burn yourself. Just it's varying degrees of severity. That's all. Just trying to avoid the, the ER. <laughs> if I look at my hands and I don't have any wounds on them, I'm kind of like, oh, <laughs> yeah. you're, not you're not crafting enough. <laughs> That's not crafting exactly enough. right. That is accurate. That is accurate. I'm not going too tight. Let's see here. See, coming along. I know they're mod podging, but mine's almost there. I've got one last little side, and I'm 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 there. I'm doing. You guys are already base coating. Man, you're ahead of me. I'm Jeez. not base coating. I'm still gluing some bark down because I I went I got really excited about this this build, so I'm. Yeah. I'm making sure I get as much of this bark on here as I can because I'm loving it. Agreed. I've been, uh, I mean, I, I love today's tutorial because I've been working with bark for a while now. Yeah. Um, and we get some awesome bark. Here's a question for you, Damien. What, do you yeah. know what the tree, uh, what, what species of tree you're using? Hey. I'm not completely sure. I live in a deciduous area here. We have a local nature area. You can just go walk. And I found, I found an old dead tree. It's, you know, I'm surprised it's still standing. The limbs are all off of it. It's really just a glorified stump that stands about uh, 15 feet tall. And it's coming down. So I just pull some bark off when I need it. And I believe, I, I want to say it's an oak, but um, I'm not positive. It's oak or maple. One of those two for oh, sure. Nice. I got a bit of silver birch going on here today. Mm, nice. Ooh. That would be nice. Birch makes a lot of, you can use birch for a lot of cool stuff because you can tear it down to like paper, you know, and then just lay that on to things. Mm -hmm. and use yeah. it for flooring, you know, use it for walls, all kinds of stuff. Well, um, there's somebody watching today. Well, I believe she'll probably be watching. Um, she said she's going to tune Tina. She also uses the seed casings. When you break down the seed casings, they can make really convincing leaves, miniature they do. leaves. That's, uh, right. Oh, nice. That's right. I, I, I was out looking. I can't. You can't get them at this time of year, but I can't wait to get some of those. You were talking. I have also seen the, the, the seed casings, the birch seed casings used for leaves. That's really good. You know, we you guys were we were talking to Damien. You were talking earlier about. Uh, the build like different types of builds to do for for um, uh, you know beginning crafters and Tina oh. shared Tina shared with me I always encourage any of any of my um, any of the uh, the subscribership to send me send me any photos of their works in progress what are they working oh, on yeah. and um, uh, Tina uh, worked up a build that we had uh, we streamed I guess it's going on almost a month ago now um, but it's a really, really good, good build, and it's kind of a modular ruin set. And I'll share it with everyone up here a little bit later, so y'all can see it. It's pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, same thing. Whenever you know, people will say often. I get comments like, you know, you've inspired me to start doing this, or I'm going to use this idea. I, I've had lots of people talk about how they're going to use my. I, oh, this, my window 
build that I did. Now they're going to use their, their windows on their dollhouses. Yeah. And then I go, I'm like, oh, that's cool. So I go to their channel because I want to see what they're doing and they have yeah. no videos. So I'm <laughs> like, you should be, make a video, show it. Let's all, let's all see what you're doing. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. Don't be, don't be afraid. That's, that's how, that's how the community, that's, that's how, um, it's, you know, one of the reasons I like, I like the Tabletop Grafters Guild so much on Facebook is it's just a constant yeah. source of inspiration for, yeah. for everything that I'm building and working on. It's really cool. Yeah. All right. So now I'm kind of, I have holes and I, now I'm in the smaller pieces and I'm looking for little chunks or breaking up and making little chunks that will fit into those yeah. little holes. And I'm just stuffing them with smaller pieces, nice. literally just breaking off or finding smaller chunks and stuffing them in where they'll fit. Now, another beautiful thing about this is, you know, uh, there's, there's like washes. Flocking hides all your stuff. Flocking is great for hiding mistakes. Flocking is great for, you know, filling in gaps. I can have a gap. I don't necessarily need to fill every, I've got a pretty significant gap here. I can see the foam underneath, but I'm gonna stick a bunch of flocking right in there and you'll never see it and it'll look great. Right. So okay. don't be uptight about making sure every tiny minuscule millimeter of foam has been hidden by Bart. Right. Because you will go into flocking and cover all that. Mm -hmm. I'll bring this piece back over again and show you. So again, this finished piece where you see flocking lots of places, I had those big gaps. I had a big gap here. I know I had a big gap right there. And I just stick some PVA in and throw some flocking on top of it. Here we go. So Damien, have you ever, um blended up the bark in a blender that's an interesting idea it's and what do you what do I with do. it it's what i do it's that would like, be like um, that'd be like a like a spackle almost you can just fill so in basic, stuff with that <laughs> so basically i mean the blender you get it right down to fine powder and it gives you from fine powder through to chunkier sizes and it just it makes a, a complete range of you just sprinkle it in i just basically glue brilliant. the base yeah, try out, man. I think you'll enjoy it. I'm going that. to do that, for sure. I'm always grinding stuff up. I actually have a coffee grinder that I use to make my own flocking with as well. And, uh, yeah, that's a great idea. Because that, that could be like like that, like almost like a spackle that you could just fill in with. I'm just doing a little cleanup here. Works a lot, man. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I'm going to put that on my list. I'm going <laughs> to steal it from you. It's <laughs> made it onto his list. <laughs> I'm always getting stuff. People are like, hey, can you do – I just had somebody request stalagmites. I've never done stalagmites, so I started playing with a design for stalagmites, and I oh, think this is what cool. I'm going to go with here. Yeah, and I think that's going to be my stalagmite go-to. Oh, that's I'll cool. make a bunch of those. How did you yeah. go uh, – without spoiling too much, what is it? Was that foam? Nope. Was that foam, Damien? Foam? Foam and acetone. Yep. Nice. Dude, acetone let's just let the acetone is the jam. Corrode it. Acetone oh, yeah. is the jam. Oh, yeah. It is yep. a great way to texture, texture. I foam. use acetone to make this live edge stuff too. I have this I have a video on live edge wood planks, and I use the acetone to create this this you know organic edge here. I just dab it with a Q-tip and acetone and let it do its work, and then I paint it sort of to look bark-ish, and that's how I get that that organic live edge effect there. Nice. Acetone is cool. Yep. All right, so I've got uh, we're all done. I'm done gluing. I'm ready to base coat. What do you yeah. guys think? Is that looking all right? That's Pretty looking good, good I brother. Little... I like I like that little little pathway in the middle. I left yep. I left one up top here for me. Uh, like it's kind of flat, so I, I tried to make it as playable. I've got my little uh, blank section up there. So I I like your 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 pathway between between the bark there. That's a really cool cool uh, idea and design. I like that a lot. It's new, it's the first time I've ever done it too. I just, really just cool. kind of came to, just thought, hey, I'll try that this time. Nice. Why not? Plus, I don't uh, have to glue any more bark down. <laughs> yeah. I could be done gluing bark. <laughs> a lot quicker. That's a good idea. All right. That's a good okay, idea. hey, folks. Uh, while, while some black Mod Podge is going down, uh, a couple of things from the chat. Yeah, please. Uh, Cloud Twirl mentioned that there is a TikTok of Damien uh, collecting that bark. And if you're interested, you could probably do some research <laughs> and figure out what tree that is. Oh, yeah, you probably could. We could My go tree on. lore is terrible. <laughs> My tree. Uh, is Sarah is. Sarah W says uh, pine cone tabs are good oh, yeah. for fungi oh. or roof tile. So oh, there's something yeah. to roof tile. That's an idea. That's that a is great a really idea. cool idea. That you want yeah, to talk about a really cool, reason. really cool natural idea for the roof tile. Wow, that's good. Uh, Sarah um, Sarah Sarah, you'll have to grab some pine cones and show us 
show us your pinecone shingle roof rooftop. That'll be cool. That'd be a good yeah, a cool one to check out. Um, and then uh, Sonder is noticing that Damien is standing up while he works. Yeah. And is having the epiphany that ergonomically that it could actually like be fantastic and is oh, regretting yeah. uh, his current uh, commitment to the workstation that he just built. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I built this. It is just a – I took plywood and essentially built a box. Um, it's open front, though, so I have the back – I essentially just built two big corners out of plywood and that braces it slapped the top on and i built a shelf about eight inches below the surface so i i, I ran a, i ran an extension cord i've got a power strip underneath here i got the plug the gun plugged in i've got the hot glue plugged in i've got the uh I've got as i said i've got my coffee grinder here that i use regularly it's also plugged in there too but um one again as a teacher i stand all day i like standing two i have pretty relatively severe ADHD and the standing very much helps with that helps me, you know, not suffer the effects of that so much. And, um, I just like standing. I just, I work better. I built it really tall. This isn't a good workspace for most people. I'm six, four. So <laughs> like my wife isn't, she wouldn't, this, she wants me to build her one too, but I have to lower it quite a bit. Um, but this is, this is perfect for me. And you know, and like being six, four, the world isn't built for taller people countertops, workspaces, everything's built for average height people. So to do anything, I, I have to slouch a little bit. And over time, that really gets to me. But mm. I built this nice and tall so I can really stand up and work and not have to look down or whatever. But he's absolutely right. The standing desk, this is cheap. I am probably, I think I am $25 into plywood, maybe another 6 or $7 into hardware. Huh? I knocked it out in, I think I knocked this out in two hours and it was ready to go. Nice. But I love I loved the standing. I wanted a standing desk. I was pricing standing desks. They are ridiculously overpriced. Yep. I mean, holy smokes. So I, I'm like, I could just build something. So I did. That's just kind of my, my nice. style. Nice. Uh, one last time. I am covering everything. Um, Go on. Tina wanted to say that she, I use seeds from a big flower we have here, uh, the hollyhock, for fungus mm. on trees. Mm. Oh yeah, she showed me some photos hmm. photos of that the other day, and it does look really like that little, the little tree fungus. That looks awesome. Nice, like shelf fungus. Like you know the ones uh, that stick out in the you're tree. Talking like shelf fungus. Yes. Yeah, looks just like that. So here, I, I did just I did just feature this build. I make mushrooms out of hot glue. I got a mushroom video, but I also make mushrooms. I make I make these shelf fungus the same way. I make a big bead of hot glue on a piece of parchment, and then I just slice them in half. And they become yep. my shell fungus here. Nice. I don't know if you guys can see that. Can you guys see that? All right? Yeah. Yeah, that's how I've been doing it. But I love the natural. I love the idea of using natural pieces to do that. Get that effect. I have a yeah, bush yeah. out front, and when the leaves die on that, I get these. These are the leaves from a bush we have, and they get very hard when they dry. Oh, that's I do nice. use this for. They look like you know larger sized leaves, almost from Lothlorien, if you will. <laughs> um, awesome. Do you guys get privet? Privet bushes? Do you know what a privet bush is? Nope. I've, I I've not heard of that here. No. Uh, uh, so they like they have like these long fronds that are big leaves, but the big leaves are made out of lots of little tiny leaves. Um, hmm. So okay, uh, okay. I, have, I haven't actually used it in a build yet, but I've been drying some out, and I'm going to try that very soon. Oh, so. nice. I'm sure everybody knows that this is just a mixture of black paint and Mod Podge uh, for the base coat. You know, it seals it, it hardens it. Um, yeah, I don't know if it, I'm think I think it's just the industry standard at this point, so everybody kind of <laughs> knows about that. Yeah. Uh, people do ask, what's the mixture ratio? Oh, I say just get it as dark as you like it, but I think it's about a two to one Mod Podge to black paint. I want to say it's one third black paint, two thirds Mod Podge, is about right. And you don't even have to necessarily be that uptight about making sure you get this everywhere either. Because uh, right. in the end, black wash is going to hide all those little spots. Right. Nice, coat, nice base coat on most of the surfaces. I'm going to veer off um, and just paint up uh, the way I normally paint up. Although I am going to be paying attention to your paint job. If you know what I mean, I mean. Okay. I'm uh, I'm yep. all base coated up here. I'm looking 
looking good. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit it hit it up with the blow dryer. Forgive me. Let me know. Let me know uh, if it's too loud down here. I'm gonna try to put it on low. You're good. Oh, that's good. Okay. Well, while things are drying and base coating is going, John Hosenfeld, a friend of the show, hey, uh, John. has used a dried bell pepper seed cluster. Oh, I've seen that. That's smart. I have seen. Like I've seen that. people use bell pepper seeds for lots of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because those won't like, those won't like rot. You know, they'll stay dried and permanent. You know, but you have to be mindful of some things. You don't want anything that's going to deteriorate or break it down or rot over time. You know. And then don't get your terrain wet, or you might be growing some bell peppers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that might be kind of cool for. A, a day so that's a that's a, g a good point actually people keep talking about um if you don't do things uh dry things out or cook them long enough in the oven that yeah. you might end up growing mold have you guys ever actually grown, grown any mold on your projects before by accident i have not i've always been careful no nope. i haven't had the problem but it's for sure a reality if you're not not punchy and it's just yeah especially moisture if you're bringing in bark from outside I don't care how dry it feels, there is moisture in it, right. for sure. Yeah. Right. Bark is like a sponge. If I toss this piece of bark in some water, it would soak it up very quickly. So it's very porous. It's going to hold lots of water. There's going to be all sorts of little cavities from bugs and things that you don't know about in there. Yeah. So yeah, you want to make sure it's very dry. So you're killing bacteria and you're drying it out. Well, when I brought mine home today and I let it set it down in the kitchen, a spider crawled out of it. Oh, yep. Yeah, I had I had I had a couple of bugs crawl out before I, I when I laid it out of the bag when I when I uh, came home from my gathering yesterday, a couple of bugs crawled out and I was like, all right, back to the garden with you. And then uh, so my wife is listening. Can we not talk about this, please? <laughs> <laughs> She's just like, what? I see you out there, no, Cloud no. Twirl. Cloud Twirl saying it's not too loud. I'm on the low setting. This is this is this is the setting I normally dry. I'll, oh geez, yeah, that's pretty loud. Yeah, it's loud. I'm gonna, I'll tell I, you I guys. Do one. <laughs> Cloud Twirl is a super fan. This guy, Woo! he is he is great for answering questions. He is a fantastic supporter of my channel. Well, awesome. I'm I'm. Uh, it's 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 lovely to have have uh, have great support in the community, which is yeah, uh, it like, is. It is like uh, I'm 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 absolutely loving all of the um, uh, support that. You know, I'm starting to get the we're starting to get the same thing around here on the live stream. Every everyone yeah. from uh, yeah. Saunder, Tina, uh, Cloud Twirl is starting to start like lighting up the comments on previous oh, yeah. on previous builds. It's great, you guys. Like it's one of the things that um, you know it's it's why we do it. We're doing it for the community to help everyone grow. And I yeah. feel like that's my biggest thing uh, that I enjoy the most about the tabletop crafting community is the willingness for everyone to share their techniques, share their ideas mm -hmm. with everyone. That's mm -hmm. such a wonderful thing. And that's why it's so wonderful, you know, uh, yourself, Damien, and everyone else who's been on this stream. When you come on this show and you share that, like it is time that you cannot get back. You share that time with us. And yeah. there's, you know, there's nothing greater than sharing a little bit of that knowledge to help people, to bring, to, to help educate and to help, uh, you know, bring a little bit more of enjoyment to other people's lives. It's marvelous. So thank you so much again, Damien, for joining us today. Oh, I'm enjoying it intensely. It's just good times. Yeah. Um, awesome. I want to say Absolutely. about, I just want to say shout out to the, to the crowd, cloud twirl, you know, and, and tortoise mom and the like, um, hmm. I really started the TikTok on a whim, to be honest. And I never thought I'd have more than a dozen or so people maybe, maybe show up mm. and never have anything to say about what I'm doing. But I have more than a dozen, that's for sure. And uh, I've rarely, I have rarely had an opportunity to have interaction with such a beautiful, creative, mm. interesting, kind, just the kindest bunch of people say amazing, yeah. kind, wonderful things all the time. I'm really overwhelmed by... I'm overwhelmed by the community that's gathered around, yep. you know, what I'm doing on, on TikTok. It's it's fantastic. Good. No hate. I expect there to be hate. Everybody gets hate. Every once in a while, somebody says I sound like Kermit the Frog. I'm fine with that. <laughs> but um, I get the Kermit comment every, every once in a while. Sure, I, I'm honored. I'm honored. <laughs> right? Like, I'll thanks. It. I'll take it. <laughs> but, uh, I, but, yeah, I, so. 
whatever. I just, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. They're beautiful people. Yep. I think, man, uh, your personality deflects hate for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Not everybody loves me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just drying my stuff. I'm all base coated up here now. Nice. Yep. Mine is done. Looking good. It's already looking cool with uh, with that. Like you could even you could even go like yeah. a route if you did like an under base coat. If you did like an orange and yellow. Uh, foam mm -hmm. treatment like instead of the black acrylic and you did spots yep. like this it would look like lava terrain if you just painted the obsidian sure. like hit sure. it with like a little light white br dry brush this thing is ready yep. to be like like the tile you're looking there you could leave that black and or paint coal. A, yeah or coal like it's so yep. cool it's super cool yep. um yep. Uh, you know immediately yeah. immediately as soon as you get the base coat on it looks like it starts looking like stone right away <laughs> yeah yeah so cool well, uh, in, in the chat is 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 still going. Uh, Cloud Twirl's been getting some love. Uh, Tortoise <laughs> Mom is wondering if we're gonna have suede on in this project. Suede. Um, I've never worked uh, with suede. Yeah. Like yes, Ask Damien, will you be using suede on this? Maybe suede. she means the band. <laughs> 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 uh, I've never. I've never used suede, but that is a texture that might be worth exploring. That's kind of cool. That would what definitely would you, give you a. Yeah, what would you use suede on? How would you use it? Uh, well, think. That, of, I mean, like that. That's well, almost that's like an earthy on. dirt area. You know? Yeah. yeah. How would you use suede? We may just be about to learn like the next awesome technique right? in crafting here. Yeah. 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 And then it that's, looks like yeah. uh, it looks like we've got. Uh, Amy Root is back, and she is actively bullying uh, Tina into trying to come onto the the stream. Which you, we support you, Amy. You, you won't have to actively bully her. Uh, I know she put it in the chat here, um, but her and Michael are have an idea and, uh, that for for a build on his channel, and then once once that airs on Michael's channel, I want her, I want Tina to come on and share it with us here on the live stream because it's it's pretty remarkable. Um, oh. Perfect. Okay, oh, yeah. we got our we got our hooks in. We we're just dragging you in. That's you know, right. It's, it's happening. It's happening. You're and coming. It, it's over. Um, with. You're clarification, done. Clarification: A suede paint is what is what Curtis oh. Mom is asking about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've, never I've, I've never even heard of it. I've never even heard of it. So it's a it's a craft smart color. Yeah, suede, and I will be using the suede. Okay. That is she's absolutely right. She's watching my videos. So yeah, I use the, I use the craft smart suede for my dry brushing. She's right. That's, that's amazing. So, I mean, um, before the stream, Damien did send through like the colors that he was using and stuff, and I yeah. literally don't have any of them. I've just got some basic acrylics, so sure. that's sure. the only reason why I've decided to go off and veer off and paint in my own way. Um, and the only I, reason I use this is because it's so cheap. Craftsmart is yeah. just it's like this is a sixty-eight cent cent bottle, you know, wow. it's so inexpensive. Uh, but this the suede is basically just a very very light tan, almost a gray tan. And this makes a great stone dry brush, but it's a very, very light khaki tan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to have to make my own tan, I think. Sheesh. Why didn't I, I don't know why I didn't pick up on the on the suede thing. I'm thinking of suede as a material, not like how you could use that. And of course, she's talking about my, my, uh, my goat to dry brush. All right, I'm all dry here. I'm, 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 this is my, my base coat's all done. I'm dry. I'm going to tap off any bits that want to fall off. Uh, and then, so now I, this is just a tan. This happens to be Deco Art Fawn. Um, you could just use the Craft Smart Tan, um, either one. They're not exactly the same, but just whatever basic tan you have. The Deco Art Fawn is a little bit more has a little bit more red in it, I would say. Mm. So that's what I'm going to go to for my my next layer. And everything gets this. I do everything in that fawn or that tan. Oh, nice. But, now, are you just dry brushing it on, or do you do a base a base coat? You do nope. you... total coverage. Total wow. coverage. I want to. I'm gonna, I shouldn't say that. Maybe it's like a. Uh, it's like a 90, 85 to ninety percent coverage. I'll hit everything, but it's okay if the base coat shines through a little bit. I do not need to bury the base coat because that right. black of the base coat actually Good makes shadow. a nice layer. Yep. So yeah. So I will. I will cover everything but with a thin layer and I will vary that. So some places it'll be thicker 
than other places. I don't necessarily, I'm not too methodical about it. I just kind of slap it on and it comes out the way it comes out. Nice. But I'm, I'm going to cover everything with that. And I don't, like I said, I, don't, I do not need a thick coat. And I can't even leave just, I can't even leave spaces where base coat is still showing. Some cracks won't get any paint on them at all. And that's okay. Right. But if you can see there, that's exactly what I'm going for. You can still see the black of the base coat shining through. I'm not nice. sure if you've got quality light there or not. I can see it. Okay, good. Yep, yep, yep. And I hit everything. And this just becomes the basic stone color. So it's it's not a dry brush, but it's not a soaking wet brush either. I'm just dipping the tips, just dipping the very tips into the paint and going in with that. Even if I get too much, it's no big deal. This all gets most, this almost all gets covered up right. with other paints and dry brushing. You'll see almost none of this when it's done. I mean, not directly anyway. I mean, you see it, but you don't know you're seeing it. And that is really like a lot of art is that way. You know, I'm Lord of the Rings geek that I am. Again, I have the extended DVD box sets that came out when they came out. And they came with a ton, hours and hours and hours of special features. And I totally... Did we just become out. best friends? <laughs> <laughs> and we watch, we Honestly. Watch it over and over again. <laughs> Seriously, dude, uh, we got we to gotta have a chat. Yeah. Um, and so I totally geeked out on... Because uh, you, you'd be amazed how much of that film is miniatures. Um, yeah. Everything in everything in Moria is a miniature. Um, everything in Mordor is a miniature. Uh, apart from the sets that they're walking on, of course. But you know, Orthanc is a miniature. It's a giant. They call them bigatures. They're giant miniatures. Yeah. But um, but I was just blown away. You can really get in tight on those miniatures and see the detail. Mm. And then also, and I forget his name, but the guy that was doing the monster painting. And to get skin, to get realistic looking flesh with paint you have to do build up it's almost like it's almost like you're working with um it's almost like you're doing what do they call that 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 art form where you lay down layers of enamel mm, and you paint in between Dan daniel probably knows the answer to that um i wish i, I knew the answer to that i'm, I'm gonna yeah. fail you but... i know like the Ch the chinese made like jewelry and uh and um, art out of it, like you know, in ancient times and even up to present now. But there's a there's this there's this process of layering on colors, and you don't see all the colors directly, but that they're underneath brings something to the surface and gives it that depth. And that really was like aha for me when I saw how they were able to build up layers of paint to get realistic looking flesh or stone. Mm. It was like my brain just exploded. It was like ah. so. Yeah. so I mean, uh, what I also love about that whole, the, the extended features is that, okay, so they have the bigatures. Uh, I mean, yeah. but whenever you're talking about um, like Sam and Frodo in amongst like um, ruins and stuff like that, yeah. that that's, all, yeah. that's, that's all foam and that's yeah, all being painted is. and dry painted and it just looks so good. That's the one thing to say uh, for you, Damien, is if you watch it in 4K, you're going to actually start to, <laughs> You're going to start to pick out all of that detail out because I know yeah. for a fact if you're anything like me, you're going to be looking in the background. You're going oh, to be yeah, looking oh, yeah, at those. Oh, yeah. So yeah, for watch sure. it in 4K and just yeah. tell me what you think then. <laughs> so how did you watch it? Where do you watch it in 4K? It's just been re-released. So on DVD? Uh, yep, yeah, you can get it in DVD now, 4K, hmm. and it is uh, honestly, I'm not even like this is not an exaggeration. I've been watching this movie every week for the last 20 years and <laughs> that's, um, that's not even an exaggeration like no that's and, great and uh they released the 4k thing and honestly as soon as i started watching it it was like watching a new flipping that's, movie man. just that's just awesome. so uh, everyone out there and you this is not a paid sponsorship from the lord of the rings <laughs> 4K, uh, peter edition. jackson new line this, cinema this, not associated with... and and also <laughs> peter jackson hits me man. <laughs> and also <laughs> and also um uh cloud twirl you were right uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah so cloud was twirl coming oh, in yeah. hard with a, a lol <laughs> nerd um and then um uh, but the, the chat's moving pretty quick today, so before I lose it, I want to ask for Sonder, uh, question for Damien, 
Do you do yes. any miniature painting? Because doing that standing up seems ninja level hard. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. First of all, I would never, ever boast about my mini painting skills. Not ever. So, I uh, know I do, of course, paint my minis, but they're abysmal. I keep hoping I can like hook up with a, one of these epic mini painters and just start doing art swaps. So I'll send him my minis or he or her my minis. They paint them up. I'll send them a piece of my terrain and we just swap because, no, I... One, don't paint minis, and not well anyway, and I wouldn't stand to do that. No, I would. I definitely sit in my chair. Um, I got, I have shaky hands. I mean, they're not bad, mm. but they're not steady. So um, I don't know if you know Jeremy at Black Magic Craft. Yeah. You guys watch Black Magic yeah, Craft? Yeah, he's got, he's he's got some got, good, he's yeah. got some good, um, he's a, really good good techniques uh, videos for, for folks yeah. that have he's shaky a God. hands. He's awesome. Yeah, exactly. He has really, he has really shaky hands, yeah. and he has talked about what he does. And I've employed that. So sitting down, pull everything in really tight and really hold things tight. But I can't, I could, you'd right. It would be ninja level standing up and painting. I mean, if I stood here, I mean, I could, if I braced myself and really stood here like so and did something, but I wouldn't so do that. Here's a funny thing. I didn't think I had shaky hands until mm. on, on Reddit one day, I posted one of my YouTube videos on Reddit and someone literally put in the comments said, Oh, I your your hands are shaking. I hope you're okay. And I'm like, wow. what? I I don't think my hands are shaking. And they they picked up on my hands shaking on oh, camera. Yeah. And yeah. like you know, maybe I've got Parkinson's or something. I don't know. <laughs> no, I've always been shaky, actually. Um, um, not. I mean, not. I don't. It's not increased over time. It's not a concern that I have. My hands just are unsteady. I certainly would never be a surgeon. But uh, yeah, uh, no, I don't stand to do that. That's for sure. Another yep. couple of comments. Uh, Sandra saying Colin can show some of my minis. Um, I don't know if you have Im images of those to put in like a slideshow. But then uh, uh, Tortoise Mom is saying, Damien, show them the figure you use for scale. It's oh, so yeah. useful. Hmm. Yeah. So thank you. Good. Good comment. I am. I mean, it's it's twenty eight millimeter scale. Basically, it's kind of like what people call it. But I just use minis. This is one of my, I haven't, I haven't painted this one, but this is one I kind of go to. But this oh, is yeah. sort of my mini That's for nice. reference that I use. So all of my doors, uh, let's see, I have a sample door here. Um, you know, I made this, I made this, this was a sample piece I created for, I made the, I showed bricks, I showed painting technique, I showed how to make a door. So that's my door size, you know, and roughly that's about the size of a door for a mini that size. Can you guys see that okay? Yeah. So yeah. I mean, is, and you would call it roughly 28 millimeter scale because the minis have a tendency to be 28 millimeters tall. And uh, so that's 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 the mini I use for my scale. So I'm trying to figure out something new. I mean, I have a I have a basic door. My doors are like always, I have a sticky note back here. My doors are inch and a quarter wide by inch and three quarters tall. That's without the frame. Mm. And that's just my standard door dimensions that I use. Nice. I, do, I do arch top sometimes. I do other dimensions. But basically that's my, this is my scale, this mini right here. And it looks pretty good in that terrain. This is a small piece of terrain, but this could definitely be a cool little battle set or an interaction, an encounter of some kind. I could even make this modular if I made multiple of these that could all fit together in different arrangements. That yep. would actually be kind of a cool yeah, idea. That's a really cool but idea. This is this is pretty small, I'll grant you, but it's it's helpful to get do something small for the purposes of our time constraints here. Yeah, but that 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 mini is my scale. I have people ask me about scale. I had somebody ask me about. Um, one one sixtieth scale because that's a railroad scale that is very tiny. Uh, I also had somebody tell me they use they do something where they're using dolls that are five inches tall. What scale would I do I use? So I always oh. just say twenty eight millimeter. But I also say whatever you want it to be. If you have a figure of some kind, if it's a train or it's a, a doll or it's a mini, just use go it. with that. Yeah. That. What would be appropriate? What would be an appropriate wall height? So my wall heights are usually two and a half inches. I make my walls two and a half inches, pretty standard. All right, there is everything covered in that. Let me make sure it's dry. Sorry? Oh, I was just saying scale is a funky thing, and uh, that's something yeah. that I've been experimenting with a lot lately. Mm. And uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For, for me, for me, what I'm realizing is that the standard quarter inch scale or one to 48 is actually mm -hmm. 
really very close to what they call 28 millimeter scales. Yeah, so yeah, that's right, that's right. Their architect's, their architect's right. ruler at home, one to 48. Uh, I'm sure all of you have your architect's ruler at home, right? That's a normal nerdy thing to have. Um, <laughs> scale, um, like, I don't. <laughs> yeah, that's actually right. I have heard that before. Again, like I, you know, there are, there's another crafter um, on YouTube, uh, Black uh, Tabletop Witchcraft. Yeah, we yep. know him. He's been on. He's been on here. John, John's been on here before. Lombardi. I think because Ch- so he is like he's a math guy. He has his stuff measured. He has his plans. It's all well, down. I like, that is beautiful. He's a civil yeah, engineer. He's not my. He's style. a civil engineer, <laughs> so he it's like yeah, it's so, rooted yeah. within everything it's that brilliant. he does. Yeah, it's brilliant. great. Yeah. His stuff is is sure. remarkable. I have tremendous respect for that. I really do. I do too. Not me. I am. Um, I'm just like I make it look like I wanted to look, and you know, it's just yeah. I kind of, again. I just I just use a mini most of the time for scale. <laughs> yep. I think not, one channels... is not superior to the other. It's just what how you maintain your own sanity. That's the name of the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think um, for me, channels like uh, tabletop witchcraft are it's it's an aspirational thing. You look at what they do and you head in that direction, but it yeah. doesn't necessarily mean yeah. well. You know what I mean? Like right. they're. they're that's what you can achieve. It yeah. doesn't mean you have to do it yourself. Sure. Like, you know no. I mean? There aren't rules. Yeah. Yeah. People do ask questions like I get comments like that. They're looking, some people, it's a spectrum like anything else, but there are people who love rules. They love order. They like a system. They like to make things sy- systematically. That is, I'm at the other end of that spectrum. I, I like <laughs> not chaos. I like things orderly to a degree, but I, I'm a little bit more in the moment and uh, don't, I've yeah. never been a lover of the rules. So I do have lots of people ask me that really want me to give them a rule. They want me to give them a standard. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't have one. Just, you know, this is, that's not, I'm not your guy. Right. <laughs> but, okay, I've got this all painted. I'm going to move into my next layer of paint. For this, I have the Craftsmart Golden Brown. It is just a very, it's a brown. It's a tan with a lot of red in it. So it's a very, or you might, you know, because you know, brown is actually a, a shade of orange. So this is a brown that has considerably more, it's, it's a warmer brown. It's darker than the basic tan that I've used. Um, and then I have Craft Smart Gray, or just any gray will work. The Golden Brown, again, if you don't have Craft Smart, you want a brown that is warmer, a little darker. And I have my gray. I'm going to use the, the, the Golden Brown by itself, the gray by itself, and then I'll mix both of those. A little bit of tan to get an in-between shade mm. and i'm going to select mm. stones or even just make streaks in the stones and this will represent different types of stones these are these are conglomerates if you will um i'm gonna get a new brush for this where did i put my brushes oh here we go um i, I like something very dark on camera it doesn't look that dark here oh mine Oh, yours. Oh, I like I'm going with something with a shorter bristle, a little bit firm, so that I can really get in there and sort of I'm less painting and more sort of you know grinding on there or just pushing the paint onto it. And I'm just going to pick some rocks and go right in with the golden brown. And this is going to be in another like maybe 85 percent, maybe even just like 75 to 80 percent, so that some of the tan shines through, and even some of that base coat still shines through not completely covering just changing the shade of that tan to this little bit more red a little warmer tan Mm -hmm. no big deal i picked that rock i'll pick uh, i'll put one next to it so this little rock next to it's kind of of the same came from the same place or of the same ilk it's okay to get over over paint won't be a big deal to get on the edges of things next to them don't want to be too careful here. Yeah, I so think I'll being too a, precious. That was my uh, thing that I used to be all the time. Is like precious. Like ah, oh, I like it's it's. I've got paint on yeah. the other. Thing. It's okay. It's okay. It's yeah. terrain. Yeah. It's all right. It's no it's big deal. It's gonna be fine. Yeah. And yeah. And dry brushing and washing at the end hides all that. Hides Again, all. Almost of it. everything you're. Yeah. Almost everything you're seeing here. It won't look at all like this. I mean, it covers right. everything. Right. And dry brushing and washing. I mean, washing especially the washes. Washes. Some I know some crafters are like they don't want to rely on the washes. Man, I love washes. Love the washes. Uh, I, love the washes. It just, it, it just it is it is the magic. The wash at the end is really what brings it out. I'm gonna pick this little rock right here too. Get that guy. 
just kind of make sure I don't want too much paint on the overpaint. But just make sure now, Damien, you were out. saying, do you go, I'm going down because I just want to have a little bit of pop of color. I'm going down on the foam pieces that are exposed and I am layering yeah. down a little bit of paint. Do you, do you do sure. that or do you just, do you just flock it? In the gaps, I'll just flock mostly yeah. um, again. Or and after I do my wash, it'll get in there too. But in this section here, I'm going to have that all flocking with dirt and stuff. So, yeah. So I picked some stones here that I painted, but I'm also just putting some streaks in this wall right here of that color, and that could because again, this looks like striation. This look layers of sandstone or sediment. I have those be different colors having represent different time periods, you know? So I don't know if you can see, but I've just laid some streaks in there and then some stones. This, this might represent the base of a canyon that goes up much higher. And these are just big boulders and things that have fallen down into here. So they will have come from different places. I kind of geek out on stuff like that too. <laughs> Thinking about where rocks come I from, where they go. I That's geek a big, out on all yeah. that stuff too. Again, it's all part of yeah. the build yeah. and the story of that build and how yeah. it's going to fit into... Yeah. Uh, the tabletop, uh, like where does it fit within the encounter, right? It's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, some questions I get regularly too are about like how do I know colors or how do I get ideas for the colors I'm picking or the painting I'm doing? And as I've said, I mean like just do a study of nature, you know, go out and look at old rock, go out and look at old wood. A lot of times when people, I think people paint rock or paint wood, they do it like they're still little kids and that, you know, wood is brown and rocks are gray and that's mm -hmm. not the case right. if you look at wood in nature or even in builds wood is mostly gray it turns gray really quickly even fresh wood isn't really brown it's really look at this I mean, look at this uh this um plywood right here it's not brown at all it's it's a tan khaki right. almost yellow really you know right and so just study stones study wood really look at it and try to figure out what colors am i really seeing here you know all right uh, all reference images. Reference images, yeah. reference images, reference images. Yeah. yeah. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Google it. I've got a rock here. I did, you know, I I, told, I showed you this little wall piece. I have this old, you know, moldy green stone. Well, I found, I had this rock right outside my window here behind me. I went out and got the rock, and I just thought, well, how will I recreate that? And this is what I got. Out. You know, it's not exactly the same, but I'm pleased right. with the result. I was trying to mimic this natural green rock with paint it's cool um yeah so that's just exactly and, and lots of google searches too i did a lot of google searching when i was working on my yep. thatch thatch design okay all right i like what i got going on here so i'm gonna move into the gray i'm gonna throw some gray in here and same thing i put too much paint in before i found this um i wonder uh the joann's that i go to uh for all my a lot of my crafting supplies because it's close um oh. it's they they carry the folk art brand and i found this raw sienna and i am oh, yeah. digging the raw sienna as a dry brush yep. highlight on the bark yeah. stone i used it on uh on the uh dwarven cemetery that i've been working on from michael and it's i'm really really digging this this raw sienna on top of the the stone it's totally it adds it like you're talking about it adds more of those those it emulates like the moss, all the different growth and the moisture that happens yep. on the rock. It's just, it looks yep. great. I really dig it. <sighs> oh man, uh, my my nephew here is in the in the chat, uh, Damien, and he's saying okay. I have to send. Um, I have to say, I guess I should send it to all of all of you. I should have to send some some to everyone, um, but some serpentine stone. I, I I challenged my nephew last week on the stream. He joined me, um, and he uh, he was asking, you know, what he's a really talented artist, Damien, and okay, uh, he he draws, uh, he sculpts, and he's a tattoo artist. Like it's just oh, nice. just amazing, amazing uh, artist. Very talented, and he uh, he was like, "What do you think I would enjoy most from from the craft?" And I just started working with again the natural elements, thinking about this stream, 
the, uh, the build that Michael had sent me. So I was like, you'd enjoy working with the natural elements because he's been into kind of rock stuff as of late. So I was like, you should take some rocks and and polish it up and, and shape, totally. see if you can shape it. So in less than two days, then he, he sent me some uh, some sketch drawings, of course, of like, what, do you, what should I make? And one of them was like this, almost like if you look into Skyrim where you like put the weapons and like enchant them. Uh, yeah, he put, he carved out a serpentine stone. This um, this this little like almost enchantment shrine, and he was uh, he did that like that was his afternoon. He just like carved that up in an afternoon. I'm like, you're ridiculous. Just like, did it. That's awesome. I know. <laughs> See, I I was a musician in school. I played violin in the orchestra all through school, nice. and then guitar and stuff. At you know when I was in, you know after that, and it was okay. I, I'm just I was okay. But like I had a really good friend who was one of those guys who could just touch an instrument and was instantly a master. Yeah. And yeah. used to just drive me really nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love the guy who's like, dude. That is yeah. that is definitely my nephew. Very, very talented. That's just awesome. Pick it up and very jealous. And he's just like, Oh, well, I'll do this with it. I'm like, awesome. Yeah. That's so I'll make cool. it amazing. Yep. I'll All right, make so it, I'll I, make it amazing. <laughs> I used the golden brown. I used the gray. Now I still have some left in my palette here. I'm just going to add a little of that original tan to each of those and lean them back toward the tan a bit. Mm, and nice. so what I get is a different, I get a, an additional hue to work with that's somewhere in between, you know? So it kind of brings some continuity between mm -hmm. all the different. Because this is kind of extreme. The gray to the golden brown is dramatic. But if I add a little bit of that tan to the gray and to the golden brown, I get some in-between places, yep. in-between colors, so you see how there's a relationship between them. And I'll go back in and just start laying down some, uh, just add that into some places as well. <sighs> uh, Tina is asking, uh, Damien, have you ever used pigments? Oh, yeah. Um not in this capacity i do use them in epoxy uh use for that so again this example this is just a clear epoxy but i have um some brown and a little bit of green epoxy uh, uh, pigments that i used in that to get that kind of green brown uh, swampy sort of uh, pond water color but i've not used them i've not used them in this in this capacity anyway i'd be curious on how that is done or what you do i'm actually um doing some epoxy in my build this week so i might after the stream might pick your brain a little bit damien if you don't mind okay yeah i know i know pigments Just... have been used before um sorry sorry michael um no problem go ahead they uh but pigments i know have been used before um i've seen i was actually watching <clears throat> some uh neil neil from real terrain hobbies this week and because hmm. i was always fascinated about his use of pigments and how he utilizes them, but he was using them on um, grout work for stone. So he'll throw the pigment down, spray it, and then he'll layer it, move move it around to add add a lighter texture, in mm. a, a lighter grout line in between the darker stone texture to really make individual stones pop. Sure, so, that makes sense. Yeah, so, he, and to that regard, uh, yeah, so. Uh, Damien, I'm assuming you're talking about like liquid pigments for your yeah. your resin, right? So uh, yes. Tina, you know, what Colin is talking about are the powdered pigments, Correct. like powdered yeah. modeling. Pigments. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. A little bit of talking around each other, but yeah. I, yeah. Um, no, I, I've not used that, not personally. No, I I'm always open to ideas and trying new things. That's for sure. I like I like when people suggest things. I think I meant to make that point earlier, but I got way on a rabbit trail. <laughs> people will make suggestions in comments on videos and i'm like oh that's so much better i'm doing that from now on yeah yeah i love that yeah i'm not i'm not proud so it's all good i don't have to step on my toes i want to be a better artist right for sure okay i think i have done all the damage i can i want to lighten this up a little bit that almost got too dark actually this so just mm. touch these slap some of this on there and tone that down a little bit but yeah i'm liking it it's looking good it's already pretty good if i were if i'd been you know 10 12 years old and made that i'd be out of my mind excited about it <laughs> yeah that that's the bark pretty, alone pretty that's the cool. bark alone was a game changer for me man. i couldn't believe how easy it is to make stone 
I did have somebody comment on the video that I posted. They said, I don't know, all I ever see is painted Bart. It's like, all right, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you're not trying to like reinvent the wheel here. It's right. like, if it works, it works, guys. Like, come on. Seriously, I mean, I think some people constantly want you to do something mind blowing, but yeah. the base the basics are mind blowing. This is mind blowing. Yeah. yeah. It is mind blowing you can do this. And if you see this and you have to think about it too, like I always try to envision like especially not trying to be too hard on myself about a ooh, that's heavy. I need to take more of that. My dry brush was not a dry brush. Um Right. Yep. It, uh, but it's going on the tabletop. It's going to be put yeah. down on a tabletop for everyone yeah. to check out and enjoy. And yeah. you're again, yeah. if you've made that terrain for everyone, I always call, I always bring it up, but it is a labor of love. And yeah. and I think it's going to be mind blowing. I know for a fact, whenever our campaign starts meeting again in person, they're going to lose their mind with all the stuff that I've made. <laughs> yeah. They're going to be excited. Yeah, that's they're also going to be like, "Whoa, you your level has gone up." Uh -huh. it's, yeah. it's it's so it's much. it's evolved in the last seventeen weeks. I'll say that much, yeah. and that's because we, of all of you guys. Yeah, man. Like we're we're getting the opportunity to cherry pick the best ideas Dude, every week. It's awesome. It's amazing. It's amazing, which is a good opportunity. You know, this is this is um, a nice opportunity for y'all. Like, if you haven't done so. Uh, and you like the stream and you like coming on and you like working with folks like Damien, Michael, and Danny. Like, uh, we do this every week. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Turn on the bell notification so so when we go live, you can catch up. Or even if you can't join us for live, that's totally cool. But you can always catch – they're recorded and I, they're, they're up every week. So you can, you can check out what we're working on. How are we doing on time? We're doing all right. We've we've still got we're at eleven. To, we're 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 at a half hour before the two hour mark. But okay, we 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 have we have we have a little bit of wiggle room. We have a little okay. bit of wiggle room, brother. We're doing I'm here good. for it. Okay, now it's the dry brushing, and this is this is when the magic really starts to happen. I like a I like this is probably my favorite dry brushing brush. It's a little big, at least for this kind of work, because it's big. Um, big swaths. Uh, I like this. It's a it's a shorter bristle. It's not big, and what you don't want is you definitely don't want to mop. Um, you don't want anything necessarily too flexible, um, at least not for the bark rock dry brushing. Right. Um, this just it's hard to find a happy medium. But with these harder bristled brushes, especially these like you know it's got a nice nice air surface area there. This is the best brush for dry dry brushing large chunks of rock, something pretty rigid. Um, and uh, yeah, I use the, as she's, as a uh, tortoise mom asked about the suede, I use the Craft Smart suede. I dry brush everything with that. I dry brush wood, rock it is just my go-to dry brush color. Um, it's, it's my favorite, it's my favorite tone for dry brushing. Um, a dry brush is a dry brush. Somebody asked me about that. Somebody commented like, that sounds like an oxymoron. Right, so it's not, this is a dry brush. It is totally dry, it has nothing on it. Um, I put paint on it, of course I have a wet brush. Dry brushing is just a term for, I most I want it mostly dry. So there's barely any paint. I load the brush with paint, I get a piece of paper towel, mm -hmm. and I, I, I try to keep my paint all concentrated so that I can just come back to this and not keep wasting paint. But I'm gonna test on the paper towel. I might even test on a space that is inconsequential. So I'll see how I'm doing there. And that's pretty good. So I get a dry brush, take off most of the paint, almost nothing. It's better to start off too light than not not enough. Really? Yeah. Too light than too much. Yeah. Rather. Yeah. And and this is really just this isn't gonna get down in the cracks. I'm not gonna get in the shadows. I am just hitting the absolute toppest, most top part of all the surfaces. It's kind of like where light is landing or where things are eroding and all that good stuff. And just go through and start dry brushing. I'm not grinding the paintbrush down into the into the surface. I'm just quickly hitting it with that dry brush. I just don't know. Let's see. I'll get a, I'll get one of those. I'll hit one of the darker rocks so you can really see. So you see this stone right here. It's, this surface especially is really going to pick it up right away. So I start dry brushing, and look at that change right there. That's that's like that's all you need to do. Just it's, a quick little. It's an, an effect it an, is immediate. 
And it's something that I do. Like, I just... <laughs> the dry brushing and what Damien just said not to do, be careful about yeah. not too much paint, I totally did, yeah. like, five minutes yeah. ago. And But yeah. when you uh, when you layer the wash back on, you can hit that spot yep. and, del- and, like, you can... You can uh, reduce the amount of pop and help it's 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 not lost don't worry if you hit it with too much it's all groovy it's still gonna and don't be afraid to go back and repaint just that's right repaint it let it dry repaint it start that's again right. no big deal you, that... you're, you're at no point is it too late if you've gone too far with that's the painting right. so um really i think a lot of people are well i'll talk about that with the washes but yeah so this is just hitting the top edges of things the surface of things and that's what really is that's what really makes this start to look like stone that's what transforms this from just being some painted bark into some stone i'm hitting everything the coverage i would call this a i would call this a 15 percent coverage probably mm. really so, mostly uh, the, chat is mo- the chat is moving fast today um <laughs> and Saunders, so uh i want to make sure i get saunders question out into the ether before it disappears uh, saunders on it the streamer as well as the rest of the viewers uh, how do you store all of your pieces? Just random boxes <laughs> on a shelf or the, 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 the perpetual problem because we keep making and, and, and space is limited. Yep. Um, so that's a, that's a question out there. And then um, Amy Root is saying that just because of the, the, the camera today, Colin, all of your stuff looks like it's sprinkled with glitter uh, when, you, when you hold it up, which we're fine with. And uh, that is she, she is challenging challenging us to have a glitter challenge episode oh where we must incorporate glitter um which sounds to me like a nightmare but a, a fun nightmare here's your glitter so perhaps, uh, the glitter is glitter always here the glitter is always here amy root it's always you have here. gotten into a cl- this is an age old debate between my wife and myself oh she is a lover of the glitter and I think it's straight from the devil. <laughs> I, I've i used it before. I have used it before, Amy Root. And I used it – I actually used it as a test prototype for way back when I was going to build – originally, uh, I've talked about it before, how I built dioramas for my uh, campaign members for, for my D&D party as, uh, for the one-year anniversary. Gave them all dioramas based on their character stories and backgrounds. Um and in that, I originally it wasn't going to be dioramas. I was just going to do little dungeon tiles for their minis to be mounted on. And the first thing I trialed on that was a piece of uh, one of our one of our characters was from an ice region. So I was like, well, I'll make an ice dungeon tile. I've never made that before, so let me see what that looks like. And I actually used glitter on that. And it's the same glitter I actually used on this. And when you spread it around and mix it with the paint. And it kind of has that glittery, like, ice and snow feel to it. It worked pretty good. I really liked it. It can get, like, I used too much of it. So it looked a little too, it looked a little too um, fifth grade, pro- uh, like, kids project for, for me. Uh, yeah. But that was also over a year ago when I did that. So, uh, you know, I, I definitely would have used different ratios. But I liked using glitter. But... I think that's a cool challenge. Challenge accepted. Whatever I build next week on the channel, I'll incorporate glitter into it somehow. Oh my goodness. Boom. Oh there my it goodness. Is. It's going to have oh. some sort of glitter ele- element. I don't know. And which is interesting because next week we have a uh, I don't know what we're building next week. I know the guest, Josh from the Pickle Jar, who's another another uh, gent from the UK, Michael. Uh, but he's got a great channel. And he's a fantastic mini painter. Does a lot of Warhammer, Danny. So you, you, you guys are gonna have a lot to chat about. All right. Um, all right. And um, anyway, but I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm painting a mini, and maybe uh, maybe it's uh, it's gonna have glitter on it now. It's, it sure will because sparkles. It, it'll something's got a sparkle next week on one of my builds. So done. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yes. I'm gonna leave that as long, I, as long as it's not the Dwarven Cemetery. I'm happy. <laughs> Oh hey, you said it was mine to do with as I please. And no, maybe... fair play, fair play. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Gli- glitter Great. it up. Glitter I'm gonna it glitter up. it all up. We're gonna really. We got to go back and do an entire new new uh, crafting with Colin now. Now I have to go back and glitter everything. So you know, actually, if I if you slap some glitter, if you sprinkle some glitter around, maybe 
underneath a water feature, then that could come through maybe as semi-precious stones or yeah. um, you know other shiny bits you might find in water. That could be something. Mm. It could also maybe create an ethereal, magical sort of a of a of yeah. an energy. Yep. I don't know. Uh, that's true. It could go in the fountain, Michael. Oh, yeah, not bad, actually. I, I'm, I'm liking what you did with the fountain so far, though, man. I think I got, um, that, I, I that green to, is looking great. It's looking good, right? Well, it's going to be better when I put... Um, oh, that's a good question. Talking about pigments and epoxy and, and like that, I guess I'm going to stick around, too, because I, I do want to mix, like, maybe the two-part epoxy for a water effect in that build, so... I gotta pick Damien's brain too. After yeah, the I'll show you guys that. what I used for that one. I was gonna yeah. try and work it in this time too, just to show everybody what I used. But um, yeah, um, so I dry brushed, looking pretty good. I'm happy with it. Um, I will do my wash next. Now this is crucial that every layer is bone dry. Yeah. Before you do a wash bone dry it has to be absolutely dry if you have something you've done a lot of paint on it's better to just walk away and give it overnight or whatever um this is all very light painting here so i've got it pretty dry here but if you are not absolutely dry the moment you hit it with that wash you're just gonna turn it into mud also this could still turn into mud if you rehydrate the paint yeah so washes are 50 percent. don't worry about it people th i think people think I, you can just drench it in wash and it's not a big deal. Um, in fact, I do pretty much drench it in wash. Uh, you're not going to kill it because you can't always go back and re-highlight if you need to. Right. You lost all your highlights, go back and re-highlight. No big yeah. deal. Yeah. Um, don't over, don't be worried about it. But you don't want to rehydrate the paint. So for this, I do want a brush that has a lot of, that's very loose. I like this little mop brush here. You can use a makeup brush. I have a dollar store makeup brush. That, I, that you could use also, I actually haven't even got, this is still a brand new fresh dollar store makeup brush that I got. Um, something like that that's gonna hold a lot of wash so that I don't have to spend a lot of time doing brush strokes. I'm really just gonna slap it on and lay it on. And the wash is thin enough that it rolls in, naturally rolls into the spaces that you want it to go. Um, but this has to be, whatever you're washing, has to be totally dry. And I just use black wash, this is a, you know, homemade black wash. The store bought stuff's too expensive. This is a great recipe. Um, it is just is just the Liquitex matte medium, Liquitex Flow Aid, some black acrylic ink, and water. Nice. And, uh, and I, I actually just made a video on the recipe for that, also on TikTok. And this jar will last me quite some time. I, I just I showed I made a brown wash uh, maybe yesterday's video or day before. Nice. Not sure, but lots of lots of wash. Really load the brush up pretty much full. I want to get rid of any big drips at the point. You know what? I'm going to lay down. I forgot to lay down my... Um, I'm going to lay down some parchment paper first. Because this does get messy. Normally, I paint wow. on parchment paper, too. All right, what was that? Oh, no, no. Uh, while, while watches are getting thrown down, uh, I'll let you all know that the, the chat is very passionate about glitter. Um, there is a lot of glitter love. Um, is my wife in there talking have, about glitter? We have some um, advice to use a Mod Podge glitter. There's a product with Mod Podge has a glitter wow. adhesive of some kind. So you can just slap down your glittery thing. And uh, Cloud Twirl is suggesting a build using uh, like a, a pretty glittery lady of the lake type water with fairy lights in it yeah. to make it appear there are wisps hey. in the water. Ooh, like hey. that. And, uh, I have some of these fairy lights. Actually, I've been oh, trying to play it, with lighting. It looks like, it looks like uh, the glitter beard has <laughs> is is uh, spawning a bunch of ideas and uh, <laughs> look, we may be getting really sparkly next week if possible. The so glitter we'll beard see. isn't going away. It's not going away, and I know it's. I'm so happy that you look look at look at all the the wonderful inspiration that it's providing us now. It's the gift right, so that keeps on giving. This looks Amy like a mess. Hashtag support Damien's wife's cl uh, glitter crusade. Hashtag support Damien's wife. <laughs> oh no! There it is. There it is, Amy Root. There it is. Over here laughing. She's sitting here laughing. Thanks, guys. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Good job, Amy. Root. Um, you may have seen that looked like a total mess, and it is a total mess. But that is just fine. I'm just gonna go through. I'm not wiping. 
I'm just letting the paper towel pick up the pools and bubbles. I'm not wiping anything. This is just, you'll get pooling. I don't want it to pool like that necessarily, but I wanted enough on there so that it rolls into the cracks and crevices. And then I just dab off any puddles or pools that I get. Is that Ben in the background? Ben. Yeah, that's Ben. That has definitely been running around. He's he's banged on the door a couple of times. He's like, I want in. I'm like, um, not not today. <laughs> Maybe one day. I'm enjoying this a lot. This is so cool. Yeah, this is a fun this is a fun fun build, Damien. I'm I've I've now hit the wash up and I yeah. I um mine might have been it looks like I waited a little I, I rushed the wash a little bit because I muddied it up just a titch, but mm -hmm. that's gonna be rectified with a little bit of dry brushing after the fact yep. here. So. More dry brushing. More dry I, brushing. This is no this is deal. perfect for me. What I got here is exactly what I'm going for. This is a perfect balance of the paint and the wash for me. Yeah. Got a couple spots that you'll get like weird puddles of wash. Make sure you get those because it would look weird to have a black spot somewhere. Yeah. But um, this is ideal. But again, if I done like if that's if that does happen, I muddy it sometimes too. And I am gonna actually go in and still do some dry brushing on this because I want this is an outdoor area mm -hmm. in my imagination. This is a sunny outdoor area. Mm -hmm. I want some light coming in, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna get some light. I'm gonna do some light highlights here momentarily when this is dry. But this could be done, and I'm very, very happy with the way that looks. I mean, look at for me in particular, like this stone that just that looks fantastic to me. I love that. And a great thing about this also, and I think part of the reason why people might enjoy it is it's kind of like being a kid again. It's almost like finger paints. This is a big, messy, sloppy, imperfect, chaotic kind of a thing to do. Yeah. And it makes something beautiful. So you can just make a mess and not worry about it. And I think we all have a little bit of that in us yeah you know, we can like all appreciate just... that we can all appreciate yeah. that that mess for sure if you're doing a meticulous build if you're making like you know something that it's like a building or whatever you do have to be a little bit more conscientious but with with this the more chaotic really the better it's going to look more natural yeah i'm wondering if i should just switch to my um i don't know i i, I go back and forth to like so everyone can see the build a little bit better on my end i am i wonder if i can uh I should just switch to my GoPro. I, I, I started playing around Damien this week with a GoPro head cam for my streams so folks can yeah. see. Do what it. I'm, Do it. I might as well just start doing it on the stream here too because I really want to showcase like how the uh, – the like the impact – everything that Damien is talking about, like I am implementing as he's talking about it and doing it. And like you can just see the difference it's uh mm -hmm. it makes all it, it when when you go back and you hit these little highlights or you 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 know muddy your wash like i did like uh once you go back and the dry brushing really really makes everything pop again after after yep. a, 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 a wash <laughs> yep so good and here you totally screwed it up if you just just totally screw i mean just total disaster start again don't even worry about it yeah. just put another layer of paint on yep. put another do dry brushing again it's no big deal um just don't go thick. I mean, none of the paint layers are thick. I don't want to lose the detail in the bark. So everything is very thin layers of paint. Very, very thin layers very of paint. Thin. I do go through and I'll have spots where a lot of wash is sort of hanging out in a crack. And I'll go through and just blow that out so it's not too much. Yeah. Because the wash is very, the wash is very tacky. Um, it can be very sticky. And I don't want it very wet in a lot of places, but but I don't know if you, again if you saw how much wash I put on, I just drenched the whole thing. Yeah, and then just toweled off the pools. Yep. And it, and look at it. I mean, like you know, I wasn't really I wasn't careful even a little bit. It's looking good. Okay, more stuff from the chat if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Sonder wants to know, Michael, he he's intrigued by those jars behind you. Is, that, I, is um, it what I think it is? Custom shelving with glass jars mounted to them? It is. But I can't claim credit for that. It, it's um, because of everything that's going on with the pandemic in London. Uh, my wife and I, we escaped out to the countryside to stay with my, my in-laws. And I'm actually in my father-in-law's workshop. So that's all my father-in-law's stuff. But I get to use it. So that's <laughs> cool. 
Is it lids? Do you have the lids mounted and you just screw the jar onto them? Yeah, so he just drills the lid into the thing and then yep. sticks the jam jar. Oh, that's cool. But I, My I mean, grandfather I'm, did that too. While I'm here, I get to use all this stuff. I mean, this is not my glue gun, but I get to use it, and it's awesome. <laughs> my grandfather did the same thing with old jars. He had a, a, a shelf like that, and just kept like nuts and screws and things in it. Um, Twitter is a very popular subject today, and uh, Amy, <laughs> Amy Ruth is saying, um, the GoPro on your head makes her a little motion sick. Does so it? maybe attack your chest? <laughs> I have to buy another mount. I don't think I can. My I don't think Mary will let me buy another mount, Amy. So who's who's? I want to know. I'd like a list of names of people who are making the most litter comments. Uh, well, you're. I believe this is. There's a. There's someone named Sydney Beauchamp in here. Oh, there's a talking, Sydney Beauchamp. You yeah, say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some say glitter is the gift that keeps giving. People will <laughs> never forget you. So that I wonder keeps giving. You that, find it everywhere. Yeah, that's true. Um, it gets everywhere. It's everyone. Yeah. Everyone's chatting up glitter in the in the chat Every. from what it looks like. Everyone's excited about glitter. <laughs> I've got a yeah, funny that... feeling this is going to be a recurring theme on the channel. I feel so. Mm -hmm. I feel like it might be. I'm okay with that. I like glitter. Glitters. That's hilarious. Glitters. All right. Um, I haven't. I haven't had the opportunity, but uh, uh, Tortoise Mom uh, is. As, as mentioned your build twice, Michael, she's really loving that green. She's loving the grotto feel of it. So Michael, getting some love out, out of the chat. Thank you. Nice. I mean, like, I think mine is probably less realistic and more stylized, if you know what I mean, kind of, but I mean, I'm going for that kind of Lord of the Rings kind of terror mm. terrain kind All of right. vibe. And I mean, a lot of this is basically the flocking that I get is awesome. Oh, yeah. I've gone back and uh, dry brushed all of mine of now. Season. Now it's yeah, time. Screams of I'm going to get some lights. Back. So for my light highlights, um, I use this Craftsmart vanilla. What it oh, is, nice. is it's just a, it's kind of a creamy white. I'd almost like call it like vanilla ice cream, really. So it's not bright white. It is a, a little bit of a warmer white. Um, you can barely tell the difference. I mean, again, that's not a bright white. That's just a, it's a, it's just, I wouldn't even call it an off white either. It's barely sort of cream leaning mm. now cream leaning. this is where <laughs> cream leaning yeah this is where you want to be super careful because this will be a mistake if you if you aren't really careful i am going to use a very loose brush for this and i am i mean b barely barely any paint at all almost an unnoticeable amount of paint almost unnoticeable amount really pull almost all the paint off completely i want almost no paint on the brush and I'm going to only do strokes in one direction. So I imagine where my the sun is, and I want to pull away from that direction on every surface if the sun is hitting it. you know. So the sun isn't going to be, if my sun is, say, here, this isn't going to get any sunlight down from here. If my sun is over here, this is getting full sun here. And I'm just thinking mm -hmm. about that. So really, I'm, one, only pulling in one direction with my downstrokes, and two, I'm only hitting the same side of everything. I'm not going to hit all sides. Even if it was high noon, I'm still going to have some places underneath where so underneath here, there will never be, even if it's high noon, the sun's not hitting that until it comes way over here. Just thinking about where my light is positioned, I'm going to put my sun over here. So it's going to be hitting this wall, barely any paint, barely any paint, and just graze. Okay, That's all I'm, I'm doing. I'm barely noticing it. If you can even see just the little bits that it's hit there. Mm. And it's not even a detail you would notice consciously, but unconsciously you do. Unconsciously you know when the sun is hitting something. You might not be directly observing it or paying attention to it. Right. But if it weren't there in your brain, you'd think something's not right here. You mm. know, so that's a lot of the, that's sort of the secret to the this is I'm fairly touching. I'm going from this corner to that corner right now, because I'm imagining again the sun is over here coming down at maybe a 45 and just barely hitting only the things on this side the light is hitting just the top edges of things just barely and this and is I'm a detail gonna... you don't at all have to do you do not have to do this 
but I'm again a geek for those little things. Nobody may ever notice it, but it's I'll notice it, you know. <laughs> and it gives it leads the eye. So if I start here, my light my light is hitting here, and my eye is being led that way. Whether I'm aware of it or not, my eye is going to be led this direction. I'm creating a direction with that highlight, and it just gives it that that touch, that feel that is very natural that you don't even know realize you're experiencing mm. it, you know unconsciously it happens like focal points in a painting you know an artist right. has a focal point you might be able to identify easily what the focal point of the painting is but you might not but where did your eye go mm. so i saw a study one time they 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 tracked the eyes of professional artists um so they put up an image and they had a computer that tracked where their eyes went and they had professional photographers and painters look at the image and then they had just kind of average people look at it and the professionals the eyes were all over the place and rarely even <laughs> looked at the focal point they're looking yeah. at the background they're looking at the, the the textures they're all over the place where the average person went right to the focal point and just kind of hung out there and maybe moved out once in a while but just oh, kept coming back to that that's interesting. back to that place yeah really interesting but it's little things like that as an artist you should consider and i mean this is perfect for me this is i'm really quite pleased with the way this looks actually and i'm done with the paint that's that that's got to ring true to you danny for all the scenic design um elements that you that you teach and teach and uh, practice in in your profession with your with your students the focal yeah, it's, point tracking it's interesting i guess in many ways from a scenic design standpoint you're always trying to like think about the the entire composition because you can yeah. barely make the entire page go away and yeah. ironically, in the uh, the lighting design side of my life, so often we are literally trying to create that focal point. We're trying to yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody stop looking at everything else. Yeah. And we use yeah. uh, selective yeah. focus right. to to work the opposite of that. So it's a, it's yeah. a, it's a marriage of those two. Yep. Sort of yeah. Principles. You want to lead their eyes yeah. somewhere. And that's kind of what I was saying. I want my I want this piece to lead your eyes down the path. So this stands out. It's big. It stands out, obviously. <laughs> but then, I want it to. I want to naturally look down path, you know, or look in a direction. And that's exactly what I'm going for. I want to force, sort of force that to happen I from think, the observer. I you think know? you just gave my nephew an aha moment. I peered up in the chat here. And he was just like, oh, that would totally explain why I'm not a fan of focal point rhetoric. The more you know, nephew, the more you know. The uh, more you know. Yeah, you're right. And you can get bogged, you can get bogged down in the minutia. Seriously, I've been taught this time about the chaos and the creativity. And now I'm talking about how, like, all these little things that you can do with intent. Totally understand not wanting to get bogged down in the minutia of that. But if you're aware of it and then you just kind of make, mix it into your, your approach – the power of that, the power, the effect that it has on people mm. that they're not even aware of. I don't have to talk about the highlights on this piece. I don't have to discuss that with anybody. Oops. They're going to do what they're meant to do. The highlights are right. going to do the job that I want them to do, right. and they'll never even be aware of it. They won't even right. know. Yep. yep. I'm just going to nip to the loo very quickly, guys. I'll be back in a minute. Nip to the loo. <laughs> nip to nip the loo, to my the darling. Loo, my darling. <laughs> nip to the loo. Do your thing. Thank I'm you, Damien. I'm flocking, too. I'm all, I'm flocking all over the place over here, man. All right, so flock. Here's an oh, man. This is this was like a aha uh -huh for me. So yeah, there's lots of expensive fancy flocks in the market. Um, lots of great stuff. I'm not gonna diss on it, but I will say that my dollar store, I have a Dollar Tree, has this stuff. This is floral moss. I'm gonna it's go a get some. A bag. I saw that. I'm gonna totally go dollar get bag. some of that. Floral, uh, I love it. Love it, love it, because it's already like plants. So I can just use this. There's a vine. Look, I have vines already. <laughs> it makes great vines. There it is. All right. Yep. Um, but it also makes the best flocking I've ever had, and that I... includes the expensive stuff. For me, I'm just saying. Um, there's I mean, some really the dollar store out there. is the jam, dude. The dollar yeah, store love is the, dollar the jam. Store. I do too. I. I... I got I got a Dollar Tree near me, and it's mm. trouble for me when I go there because yep. it's easier to spend more than a dollar. 
is oh it's never a dollar are you kidding me i've never spent a dollar <laughs> I know, at the dollar I store know, I know, I know. not a single time <laughs> all right so this stuff is sort of more brown with a little bit of green mixed in but not enough green and then this stuff is super green like i would never just use this by itself i was get the dry brush or something but i go about three parts of the browner stuff to a one part of the green oh nice i make this mix it up yeah that's good and I, and I mix it and then i use the i have the coffee grinder you, you have you still have two views oh yeah okay so oh, yeah. I got an old, I got a coffee grinder. This was on Amazon. I think it's uh, 13 something, $13 maybe. If you have an old coffee or spice grinder, I'm just going to stick that right in there. <coughs> excuse me. And I can, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I can control this. So I get, uh, I'll show you some examples again. Um, maybe. Oh yeah, this is perfect. So on the hut here, Let's bring this right up to this camera. On the hut, on the roof, I bear. It's the same flocking. The stuff in the on the ground, and on the roof are the exact same material. So on the on the roof, I left it a little chunkier. I didn't grind it for as long, and I got this more mossy look. For the ground, I wanted it very ground up, so I ground it down to a powder, and I got this what would be grass or ground cover. Same stuff, two different textures, just the amount of grinding that i do nice with the coffee ground grinder yeah That's so cool. this isn't too loud either give it a shake oh nope. oh sorry I had a little trick that i forgot about um i also take a dryer sheet just a regular old dryer sheet oh what's that do i cut off a little tiny piece of it just a little square dryer sheet because you are going to get static when you grind this oh. stuff oh especially my snow flocking same thing i had a snow flocking video mm -hmm. dollar store flower foam the white flower foam makes amazing snow flocking it's a little sparkly it looks like great snow powder uh, this gets crazy staticky mm. so i just toss the tiniest little piece of dryer sheet and this will get ground up to nothing you won't even know it was in there but it stops the static nice it just occurred to me one day so i wanted to have a static problem through a dryer that sheet in brilliant tip. that is a really that brilliant is tip. brilliant <laughs> brilliant tip. just a little piece and cloud Cloud Twirl is saying, Colin, that, that could be your, uh, this this moss is your vines for that dwarven. Yeah. Uh, the, the dwarven. You're not, there, yeah. you're not, you're not wrong. You're not wrong, Cloud Twirl. I think that's a really good idea. Man. That's a really good, that's a really good idea. Very, very economical solution, too. I like that. Oh, yeah. Super cheap. Looks fantastic. Very happy with it. Let's go for my trash can back there. All right, lay this down again. And I'll tap this out, and that's that's what I have. That is some. Actually, there's a little bit of a dryer sheet. No big deal. Pull that out, and that is some great. And I might get little sticks and things that I don't want. No big deal. Some oversized things, um, but uh, I am very, very happy with this for flocking. Um, it's my favorite all time. And again, I, I I just always looking for ways to make it as inexpensive as, and simple as possible. Mm -hmm. I hate spending money on crazy expensive stuff. Um, yeah, just, I'm just I'm a teacher. I teach sixth grade. I don't have any money. So, <laughs> what are you giggling about over there? Yeah, I, I'm I'm giggling because I, I'm no, a teacher. My, sorry. Oh, my wife's giggling. Oh. Yeah, yeah, well, you too. Yeah, no, teacher. I'm giggling too because I'm a teacher too. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't have a lot of money. All right. I'm using, I'm using tacky glue. You can use Elmer's glue, although um, it's just this is tacky is just a high quality PVA. That's what you want, just a regular PVA glue. I'm just gonna go in and slap it on some, and start laying it into the cracks. And then I'm gonna use the. Uh, I have this this very fancy tool here. I have the enchanted toothpick. Now, if you don't have an enchantment table at your house, you can just use a standard toothpick for this. Mm -hmm. Not a big deal. But I just get the toothpick, I lay it in where I want it to be, where I want flocking to go. Wherever there's glue, flocking is going to stick. So I'm going into my cracks here, spread it around with the toothpick of destiny, <laughs> and throw on the flocking. Just sprinkle wherever you want there to be flocking sticking. I will give it a little bit of a press in, make sure it gets into that glue. And then I upend the piece. And tap off the excess. Nice. And there you go. Let me see. Something we didn't take. 
This is my favorite step of flocking. I love flocking. Yep. And look, I mean, I, I think it looks fantastic. You know, uh, I mean, maybe there's more professional looking flocking out there, but this is the level that I am completely satisfied with at the price point that I want to pay for it. Yeah. And you don't have to necessarily do a little bit at a time. I actually will go through and just put glue everywhere because the PDA does not dry quickly. So everywhere I want flocking on this piece, I'm just going to go ahead and put in some glue and just do it do all you ever, at once. Do you ever water down your PVA for the flocking stage? Uh, no, I don't. I just, uh, I do know like, oh, no, you know, I take that back. I, I did a little bit for the, the base of the little hut that I did because I wanted it to lay really flat. Um, but no, not always, not regularly. I just don't put a ton in. You don't need to. And I use the toothpick to spread it around. But anywhere there's a crack pretty much, just put some put some flocking in there. And again, any place, especially where you can see the foam base between the rocks, lay some flocking in there to hide that. Just, just It's like your Band-Aid, really, you know. Michael, you're being accused of borrowing the gremlins this week. <laughs> um, Oh yeah, I I think um, Dan. I, I mean Daniel. Don't tell anybody that I did borrow your gremlins. No, I mean uh, to be quite honest, um, I have been doing an awful lot of this recently. Um, uh, just terrain and just scattered terrain and stuff. So basically, I haven't really. I up until the point where we did the black mod podge, I was following along, and then I just kind of veered off and just. Did the standard did the thing, thing that I've been doing recently, and it's just, it's kind of a bit of a habit at the minute. So, all right, here we go. I have gents. students, I have students like you all the time, and they're my, they're sometimes my favorites. I love the ones. I'm like I'm teaching my lesson, or we're doing something. They have their own idea, and they go off and do it their own way, and I, I value that. I appreciate that actually. A lot of cool stuff comes out of there. I think also is, um, I don't have the exact same materials uh, sure, sure, what sure. Damien has. So you've got to use what you've got to go. So yeah, I mean, I have to gear off at some point anyway. Mm -hmm. I know, mm -hmm. I know um, that's what you were talking about the other other day. Uh, so uh, Cloud Tour was talking about having limited supplies on there, co commenting on one of my one of my past streams. And I was just like, oh, it, it truly is like, what do you have? And then from there, you can do anything. Like the very first stream I did on on this channel was I'd never made anything out of like cereal board and like cardboard mm. just by itself. And I was just like, I'm gonna try that. I like although Jeremy from Black Magic Craft, I was like, I've never done that. So can I make realistic wood texture out of cereal, like thin cereal card stock? You can. And it's, it's like once you score it up and like add texture to it and then you go back and all the steps that Damien's been talking about, the dry brushing, the washing, it creates those lovely, lovely effects. Yeah. But the, the, I mean, go ahead, Damien. I'll, I'll no, I, I, I was agreeing. I just said true. Absolutely right. Yep. Mm. Uh, I was just going to say um, one of the things um, as well is that everyone has a different taste and that is mm. very key. Mm. And yep. Like just because one person does it one way does not mean that that's the right way. If you like something a little more stylized, go for something like, like that. Yeah. With me uh, recently, relinquishing control on uh, the dwar Dwarven build, for instance, <laughs> is has been a bit of an eye opener because mm. um, I would have painted that totally different to what Colin is doing. And not because I think it's better, just because it's the way I would do it. And I've been so enjoying actually relinquishing that control and seeing the way he's done the stonework and all of that sort of stuff. And it just looks awesome. So, you know, that's a big deal. Yep. It's a big deal. actually. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it, it, it makes, it makes all the difference in the world. Um, and like just the different that everyone's got their, their, their different approaches, but it's also fun too, to like, you know, when I came to the bark, I'd never, I hadn't painted it before and I wanted to like not screw it up was my big thought. I was like, sure, I don't want to, sure. I don't want to mess it up because yeah. this is, this thing traveled 5,000 miles um, for <laughs> me to work on. So, um, but then again, like that's part of it too. That goes to 
uh, goes back to what a lot of us um, talk about, have talked about, and I know Damien, you alluded to it today. To if you've got a plan or you've got an idea, to follow it, like follow the gut instinct. I like to follow, to follow that train of thought. If I go down that that rabbit hole, I'll go down it. And again, worst case scenario, you can always start over if you want to. So. Mm-hmm. I think, sorry, just sorry to keep going and um, talking here, Damien, or whatever. Um, no, not at um, all. But just to say as well, just to say as well, is that like all of us are here are crafters, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And the thing is that but there's a lot of people out there that haven't got a clue where to start yeah. and they need this information, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So if you've been doing something for a while, you'll find your own way to do it. Mm-hmm. But then there's people who haven't got a clue what to do, where to go, so anyway, that, that, that's just another point is that like, absolutely we need that. Yeah. Don't recreate my aesthetic. Like I like grimy, broken age. Like that's, that's just what I enjoy. I really like that. Some people like very whimsical, you know, the fairy house thing is super popular right now. Part of the reason I built that like this, again, this piece that I, this is really not my usual aesthetic. This is very, whimsical and cute if you will i enjoyed making it intensely um, can you put it under your can you put it under the main uh the bottom camera just have a look quick sure, sure, sure. ah yeah that's cool, is man. that good Love so it. very very whimsical very you know it's so cool um fun and not exactly my usual aesthetic i still did make the bricks really grimy and green but um but that's you know that's outside of my sort of uh, not my comfort zone but definitely not in my wheelhouse if you will uh but people like that and i want to show people how to do how to better do what they like doing so i don't feel like i have to stay stuck in my aesthetic either but i certainly don't want people just trying to copy me if you like what i'm doing it's fine no but but I, I, I always mean, appreciate it when people find their own voice you know just as i'm watching you work here man i uh, basically i think that you yours is probably more believable as a real piece of terrain right. does that make sense yeah yeah, yeah that is what i'm um, going for yeah. like i think mine is a bit more stylized kind of sure uh and that's the aesthetic that i like i'm yeah. I, I i i do like this as well but this is this looks is starting to i mean really look real mm. just in, in uh, miniature I like that is and that is what that is sort of what I'm always going for again cheap easy but I want it to look as realistic as possible I really have dreams of being able to do like macro photography you know again back to the Lord of the Rings those guys they were putting those cameras right on on those bigotures and you cannot tell or think tower was never built as a set piece that is a giant miniature and they have the cameras right on that thing. Um, there's the big shot, um, uh, Return of the King. You know, the camera pans up um, Baradur, and that's a huge model. And it, you, I, this, it's it's a hundred percent believable, one hundred percent believable as a real tower, as a real structure. And so I'm like, that is, I don't imagine I'll ever be there, maybe, but I'm pushing for that. That is not. That is, that is always the, the, the prize that I'm seeking, you know. I want it to look as realistic as possible with the materials that I have at my mm. disposal. There's um, there's a couple of things. I, f- I floated back into the chat here too. Before I go into the comment, there's a couple of things in the chat I want to speak to that you guys are talking about. Okay. But – um, up in the up where my camera was, I've uh, I, I I put put up a couple of pictures that Tina has has been working on this week. Some of those builds should look pretty familiar there, John Hosenfeld, because um, it's your modular ruins from a, from about a month ago, um, and uh, put those together. And it's really really cool setup. Again, uh, another crafter with another variation on that on that same build, and all of us by this stage have had different variations but i really really love i love the archway that tina has added in there for the stonework on one of the walls it looks really cool um but that's that's it's looking really good then you uh tina also made a magnetic tile system this week and i don't want to get into too much about that but basically underlaying wire under the foam so when you put a magnet on the base of your ruined wall your column your obelisk whatever it is you can move it around on the board on the foam and it magnetizes wherever you want 
which is cool. amazing. So that's that something really cool. I know. I know. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for for uh, uh, for upcoming videos from uh, from from our channels on that. And Tina, you're gonna have to come on and and uh, tell us how how uh, how we work how you worked that. That's great. But real quick in the chat, you guys are talking about um, you know S uh, Sondor Sondor is talking about. Um, you know, no such thing as a bad student and about teaching and, uh, oh, yeah, this, no, this, right. yeah, like this, this comment of, of, of being, um, you know, about being a bad student or being, um, being a, a new student. Like, I, I think, I think Sondor hit it on the head talking about, he wants, you know, it's his job to come up with a way to inspire all of the students. And I think yeah. that's what, for me, um, that's my hope and goal of this channel. That's my hope. That's what I love so much about Damien's, uh, all of Damien's um, social social media outlets, where he's he's all the content that he's creating. Same thing that I love about about Michael's um, um, channel, everyone's channel, and the entire crafting community. It's meant to inspire. It's meant to inspire. Yeah. Um, and it certainly has. So if you have that in mind, and as long as you know you're following. It, whatever whatever the rabbit hole is it doesn't matter if it's a magnetic uh, modular ruin build like tina did this week and then tina is also doing book nooks and tina's doing tina's <sighs> got a bunch of different projects going on it's good like you're pursuing all the projects you should be pursuing the things that you're excited about totally, totally. you know what i love you though, i kind of got that Sorry. do you know what i love though is that um we had john hosenfeld on what three or four weeks ago was it yeah <laughs> It's been, a, and, I think, a month. It's been a month, I think. And an idea that he has had himself is now being done by crafters across the world. Across that the world. That is cool. That is super cool. cool. It is cool. And that's that's uh that, that that's amazing. That's 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 why <laughs> that's why I'm gonna keep doing this because it's it, there's too many wonderful ideas out there. There's too many fantastic people doing this art form that are that have got a lot to share. So. I just want to put in real quickly yeah, for my path in, here. I just laid in some PVA and I'm just using play sand, literally a <gasps> bag of play sand yeah. from the hardware store. Um, it And I won't leave it like that. I, I, it will need to dry first, but I will go through and put some dry brushing on to make that look more, give us some different, you know, cause right now it just looks pretty one. It's, you know, atonal, but I'll go through around the base of the rocks and really put a lot of where water would be running off and, creating a lot of browns and greens in there and um and then i'll flock along the bottom as well so that i can hide the seam between the rock and the and the sand but that's just play sand super cheap big bag for like six bucks probably la that bag will probably last me the rest of my life <laughs> yeah that's what uh, i keep saying like i that, bought, so that's, I bought that's, a, a big bag of it too and i was like this is, i'll never use all of this i'll never use all of it yep never let's hope not yeah <laughs> <laughs> unless yeah okay. Get, I mean, I'd like crafting. to be so busy I run out of place sand. That'd be nice to have that kind of work for sure. Right, right. I will dry I will dry do some dry brushing on that once it's totally dry, but that will be some time. Michael, let me see yours. I, uh, I haven't seen yours. Dude. Look at that. I'm just gonna put a little bit of better lighting because my light is terrible, so Oh, it looks good. That looks great. I mean, it's it's my. I mean, you can tell it's my usual painting style. You know what I do, so. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Bravo, everyone. So, everyone had. I love it. All all different builds today. Oh, can you can you um put it square on to the camera? Looks great. Uh, Colin, as it no, as in face on. Sorry. What do you mean? Like, you want it like that? Yeah. Or like, yeah. the, you want it like this? No, that way. Yes, that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool, oh, well, man. It looks great, man. Yeah. It came together. I'm, I'm, I'm digging it. I threw, I found these bushes on, on Amazon and I bought them and I'm really digging these little bushes. They're going on everything that I'm building right now because oh. I, I, I just like the way they look. I like the way Damien they look. Dollar Store also. Something. Yep. Dollar Store has these also. Oh, cool. Yeah, I need to. Mm -hmm. It's it's a trip to the dollar store for me here pretty soon. That's what I'm. That's and what I'm hearing. Packs of magnets. Shit. They have these packs of magnets, a set of twelve for a buck too. Also. Oh, nice. Nice. I've actually just remembered there. something. What? 
uh, in the kitchen, I've got some lichen oh, that, I, yeah. that I picked up from the forest oh. uh, yesterday. It's drying on the radiator and it's going to be ready and I'm going to put that on. I'm going to add some more. I'll be back in a minute. Molly Moss and Alice Algae got to liken each other. That's what I remember. Yes. Uh, and guys, these are all great builds. All like using the using Damien's techniques, all with different results. You got a centerpiece thing. You've got a, 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 a valley to go through. You've got this stepped like plateau thing. Like like all different and very cool ways of yep. using these techniques. It's awesome. Thanks, yeah. brother. I'm I, I'm digging I'm digging how how it all came together. Um, I know Cloud Twirl had a question earlier, like, what did I envision my piece? I envisioned my piece like being as part of like an area of scatter train for the wilderness. Like I think of, I'll Ooh. keep it, you know, uh, both Damien and Michael will appreciate this. Like think of Aragorn leading um, the Frodo, Mary, Pip and Sam through the wild. And, you know, right before they get to Amon Sul, like I kind of had that envision where they're like kind of scaling, not crazy like, terrain, well, yeah. but a little bit of wild terrain where they're, they're, they're trekking into the yeah. wild of middle earth. That's where, that's where I drew it looks like, like weather top. Yeah. yeah, that's that's pretty much where my imagination exists 100 percent of the time. I yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, so I didn't go ahead, brother. Can I, can I can I just show you guys what I find in the forest? Yeah, what, this was lichen, dude. So this is the, like um, some of the trees oh, around fantastic. here. It, this is just growing like everywhere. I'm 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 almost thinking about um, trees. Just har trees harvesting these trees and selling this shit because it's just everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say uh, I people keep asking me about trees. I have I'm not happy with any trees that I've done, and they're so expensive to get really good trees. I'm still working on how to get really mm. good trees. I just I'm not happy. Yeah, yeah I have it's something I haven't played around with a, a whole lot either, Damien. Like figuring out like trees, you know, building. Yeah. Okay, I, there's there's been tons of videos out there about about the trees, but yep, tons of like, videos. I yep. really liked. Yep. I really liked Michael's tree that he created, like with the ability to t take twine, twist it, treat it with hot glue to secure it, and do <laughs> limbs. I really mm -hmm. like that. And then once you flock it, that looks pretty good. I really like that. Um, it is it, it is good, but it's it is again still a little bit stylized as yeah. opposed to realistic. Do you know what I mean? But you know, yeah. it's a, it's horses. I love that. I love the the twine tree, hemp string, hemp string, hemp string. Well, I, if I, I love I love that little pathway in, in your build, Damien. Like in my mind, I would go. I the my first thing is just like, oh, you're coming around to bend here. You see a pool, like a little bit of a blood trail with like maybe a couple of skulls going. Uh oh. Like if you had a progressive system of piecing all mm -hmm. these tiles together, and as you as they moved through through the pathway, like it increasingly looks a little bit more. <laughs> there's something up ahead and you better you better you better uh, like get it. ready to roll perception checks but i love love it's, it's love coming. that little pathway there you could easily have turned that and you still could turn it into a river you could turn it into a river still if you wanted sure. to oh yeah easily right yeah yep so damien for your tabletop do you mostly um create scattered terrain or do you do big bigger set pieces as well scatter yeah, scatter all the way. And then do you use um, battle mats or what? what is it you use for underneath? Tiles, just mostly. Mm. Tiles, yeah. Yeah. I've been, yeah. I've been looking at, I've been looking at, these, some of these people have these high-tech tables. I just saw something. Somebody has like a, a flat screen TV on, oh, their, yeah. on their table yeah. with, a piece of, with a piece of glass over it. And they just have a, an image of their map. I'm like, what? <laughs> that is some seriously intense stuff, man. Yeah, when I was playing in in person in the before time, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I, had before that, I had a similar <laughs> setup. Yeah, um, because I I also do projection design for the theater, so I was just kind of marrying mm. all my things together. Mm -hmm. and it, can't do it for every every map because it's a little bit labor intensive, but yeah. uh, good good times. Good times. Mm -hmm. I like I love. I like the idea of, I thought the cool, I, I don't know about the brightness of a big LCD TV or flat screen TV or whatever, but I thought that was really innovative and creative and interesting way to 
marrying modern technology with this well, idea and then they're, of this. They're animating you know, the map. Roaming around in ancient so times. So when you, when you throw that up onto the yeah. table, it's an animated map. And then yeah. people are throwing yeah. their scattered yeah. terrain on top of that. So you have the animated elements from yeah. the TV from the map that's been created. And then you're adding the, ta- the 3D tabletop elements. I was like, that's wild, man. That's pretty cool. That's uh, my my D and D group keeps in, or encouraging cool. me to do to do that, and I'm like, part of me really likes that mm. idea too, but part of me is like, I'd much rather have the the live physical tactile 3D terrain there. Like I am, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, if I had anything up in the background like I'm on a TV, you. it might be kind of cool to have like a background where you can have like if there if you're in the dungeon, but then up on the TV there could be like the drippings of like a cave. I don't know, like the other ways to, to be immersive. One of, uh, one of our employees, uh, works at the aquarium in long beach. And that's where I used to work too. It's where my, I met my wife and they have this giant theater and they have like this 360 degree they have this giant multi-million dollar theater that isn't being used. And I'm like, I just want to go in there and sit in the middle and like that. I want to make an interactive D and D experience. Like I want to sit in that theater and cre- I want to use that technology to create the, the, uh, the, uh, the one shot encounter for, for, for a party one day. <laughs> I wonder if they'll let me do it. Totally. Only that would be oh, cool. They'll, they'll never. Hey, another detail it. here. Yes. What, do you think what about like, I'm think about, where wind is hitting where water is running um you know if water is collecting or flowing in a in a usual place which it does because it's pulled by gravity so it's going to find the path of least resistance and as it trickles down these rocks it is going to gather at the base of the rocks so you are going to have darker terrain in addition as this is a path people are walking down the middle keeping that area fresh it will be of a lighter hue so it makes sense to make sure I'm just going in with this mixture of this green and brown and hitting the edge of the path so that it is darker. Again, as imagining water is run through there and collected there and people aren't necessarily walking there very often. And you see that I've got this like gradient hue change here from dark at the edges to lighter in the middle. That's cool. That's great. It's just one of those other details to think about, you know, especially with water. Especially with water. When you're building buildings, where is the water running down the side of that building? It's going to hang from the eaves longer than it sits on a wall. So there will be more sort of dirt and growth and whatnot there. Um, But be thinking about, you know, those sorts of details. Mm. Also, you don't want every, you don't want, you don't want, you don't want anything to ever be two dimensional, right? right? You want there to be dimension in everything always thinking about how to add another layer of detail or dimension to that and i think that's looking pretty good it's looking great it's i'm gonna go and great. flock the one down here to the bottom. <clears throat> you'll have to you, you guys you'll have to send me send me pictures of your builds today please in the fate in the in mm-hmm. our in our group chat you'll have to send them send them to me i'd love to to share them and tag you guys um and yeah. i'll do the same i'm gonna i'll send you guys um mine as well so you guys have it well this has been fantastic, Damien. This has been huge, yeah. brother. I, I what a what a great build today, and what a what a pure pure joy to be able to spend some time with you and um, totally. all of all of uh, all, you know some of your fans coming over and hanging out with us today. Thank you so much, everyone, for for coming in and, and hanging out with us today on the Crazy Crafter live stream. Again, if you haven't uh, if you haven't done so and you want to get notified every time we go live, be sure to subscribe. Uh, turn on the bell notification and like this video share it with your friends let us let let other folks know um that we're that we're here and we're doing this every sunday 10 a.m and uh we'll we'll have um the pickle jar will be on next week uh looking forward to to meeting and working with josh i'm not quite sure what we're working on yet stay tuned i got a meeting with him tomorrow and uh we'll we'll chat we'll chat and figure out what what's coming up on the horizon i'll be working this week um a little bit more on the i the dwarven cemetery will be wrapped up this week there's actually some cool little tutorials that i want to do in the live stream during the stream uh this week on some of the um things that i use to populate uh the inside of of the dungeon underneath the 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 cemetery so i'll show you guys uh, that and then i'm going to dive into that princess bride uh 
diorama. So I'm excited. So I'll make that transition. Nice. Um, yeah, that's yeah. Cool. That princess. Star, I'm gonna try to make those 28 millimeter rapiers. I don't know how that's gonna go, Damien, but uh, oh yeah, I'll be yeah, sure to. I'm sure. That. I'll sure. I'll sure. I'll pick your brain. And be like, uh, ideas, please. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Green uh, stuff or 3D print? That's what I'm gonna do. I'm green stuff. I'm gonna green stuff. I'm gonna try to green stuff, and then I'm gonna try to use some jeweler jeweler's uh, rings and see what I can come up with. But it'll be fun. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for uh, for coming in and uh, hanging out with us today, Damien. Thank you so much. Be sure to head on over to all of his um, content over on Instagram, over on TikTok, on YouTube. Stay tuned for more builds that he's got coming up. Michael's got his uh, weekly videos. Daniel, thank you so much for monitoring the chat and hanging out today. It was huge, brother. It was a fun one. Yep. It was fun. Thanks. All right, Thank you, guys. I appreciate having me on. It was really fantastic. A lot of fun. I like I like community, you know, and this has really this has been another opportunity to have that. So oh, you're so welcome. You. Thank you all. And thank you, speaking of community, thank you guys for, for joining us today. And we're looking forward to, to seeing you all throughout the week. Until then, be sure to craft your passion daily. And we'll see you next time. Later, y'all.